let's bring up the map Veto, and then we'll talk through the picks and bans. So it is a best of three, and we're using a slightly different pick and ban system. It's going to be one ban, two ban, one pick, two pick, and then more bans, another two bans, and then we have the decider match. So Bank and Organ banned out. They're gone. These next two maps are going to be picks, and we will be playing on border. And then also, whatever, Sonics decides to pick. Border will be first map. Clubhouse, the pick there from Sonics, that'll be our second map. And then we'll have our decider once this last band comes in. Unsurprising to see 92 Dream Team ban out both Bank and Villa. These are two of their most banned maps. They don't particularly like playing them as so far that we've seen. Uh -huh. And also Oregon getting taken out by the Sonics. Oregon is a map that notoriously tends to benefit the teams who are most chaotic. The teams that are more well-structured might not fare the best. It's not really too much of a surprise to see that. So our maps, we've got Border with 92 Dream Team starting on attack. Mm -hmm. We've got Clubhouse with 92 Dream Team starting on attack and then we have to wait and see what's going to happen with consulate but that is a that is a very interesting thing that we have 92 dream team starting on attack for both maps that means that both of these teams are getting what they want in terms of sides that they have selected because you get to select the side of your opponent's map right so you go on to border and you get to pick whatever you want well the picks are in for both teams and they both decided to stay on the same side for both of these two maps it's just an interesting uh, kind of contradiction between these two teams and a good highlight of the difference in mentality for them um let's bring up the community vote we'll see what you guys think who's gonna win the match uh Lots of fans on the side of the Sonics. That makes sense. Uh, and it's a straight 60-40. Was draw not even... Oh, there's no draw. It's a best of three. I'm so used to it. Why do we even have it there? 60-40 is, I think, kind of what you would expect uh, given the uh, pedigree on the side of the Sonics. I think that, number one, you come in with the Sonics being a big brand. They're an actual esports organization that was founded somewhat recently. 92 Dream Team is not an org. It's just the name that the team plays under. Yeah. They do not have representation the same way that about half of NA Challenger League does. But additionally, you look at the fan base that surrounds the 92 Dream Team. These are a lot of players who come from console. They've got quite an extensive fan base. They've earned it for their play. So it's not really a surprise, honestly, to see them come out and get 40% of the vote. But we'll move on to the map ban phase. And, well, the Sonics will start first. And they'll ban a buck off the board. We've seen a couple teams do this on border because it's going to negate the way that you play downstairs. It's going to put all the pressure that you usually see on Armory that you might see over on Archives. That's going to be gone. And additionally, having a buck in play on the second floor when attacking the downstairs sites can be equally just as vicious. Yeah, so it means we're probably going to see a lot of Sophia, a lot of Ash um, as they're required in terms of the soft destruction. That vertical play is pretty important. Mira being banned out is going to hurt the defense mostly on Armory, uh, as it will definitely make holding onto that Armory wall or even offices quite a lot more difficult. But the Glass ban is going to assist the defenders in the same way on that same playing field. Uh, the Buck being banned is why the Mira was probably also banned as, uh, again, a lot of pressure vertically on the Sophia and the Ash. And if you don't have the Buck, maybe you just don't want Mira to be there. It's worth noting that 92 Dream Team ban, have banned Mira on almost every single map that they've played. It's true. Challenge it's true. League. I'd need a confirmation that it's been on every single map, but all of the background work that I did showed that it was mostly Mira. And then Glass is also a, a pretty popular ban. And then, I mean, you know the way that glass can be played on this map. It's a pretty important set of smokes that are off of the board. It's going to rely on you likely running a Capitao, maybe a Dokabi if you really, really want smokes, maybe even a Jackal. But it really comes down to personal preference. As you see with 92 Dream Team, they're going to forego smokes altogether, though. So they're just going to go for a pugilistic style of play, fight it out, don't try to obscure the plant, maybe take some control and then just hold that armory wall if that's where they choose to go from. But... I like what Dream Team is bringing because they have the tools available to attack either Armory or Archives quite effectively. Well, there is definitely a lot going for the attackers right now in terms of anti-electronic. They've brought all of the anti-electronic operators, IQ, Thatcher, and Twitch. So abundance of uh, problem solving there. They are going to be facing a Maestro. No echo being brought here by the Sonics, despite being left unbanned. As well as a smoke. So good, I think, uh, awareness here from Sonics in terms of their operator selection to uh, have at least 
some amount of counterplay in the uh, in the offsite kind of uh, sense. Especially considering the Mira is banned out, it's very important that that is present. Also, one thing that is kind of flies under the radar with the Twitch change, as well as the Thatcher change, is that oh, yeah. gadgets now open up those evil eyes. It's just so powerful. But Twitch can kill an evil eye with the second tase of her gadget, whereas a second EMP does not destroy the Maestro evil eye cam. So if you set them up a little too far off site, there's nobody to essentially babysit those evil eye cams. Very easy for Rexen to be able to use two zaps from that Twitch drone and take a valuable piece of utility out of your control. Hey man, I don't know about you, but I would have argued that Twitch is far from needing a buff. Now she's been made really relevant with that uh, Twitch drone buff as uh, being able to destroy those evil eyes. But that's as it is, and it will be, I'm sure, a big part of this match considering Goddess seems more keen on playing Maestro instead of Echo. Now, we're seeing a lot of utility being dumped in here through the armory wall by the attackers, and uh, Dream Team are just trying to get control so they can plant an exothermic charge. Now with that wall opened up and the bandit pushed off, they have a lot of pushing power in the rest of their utility to take armory. I don't even think Avian was trying to contest that either. He no. knew that the play was coming in with the frag grenade, and I mean, you try to bandit trick that and it's to your own doom, right? It's, yeah. uh, it was very likely that any ADS that was in play from Neptunes was taken out from that EMP, and then you heard the grenade go off successfully. So that's control, at least for the moment, that 92 Dream Team have, and a very early pick comes at halfway. Goddess goes down playing inside of Archives, that little punch hole that was made in the window will be her undoing. It's also a maestro off of the board, so there's nobody to reposition those cameras either. That's a lot of the uh, stacked utility from Sonic's just done away with and almost on a whim it seemed by the Thatcher. Now it's all going to be on Ghost using those gas canisters to the best of his ability to try and deny this push. ADS is though still in play and that's very important. It's a bit of sloppiness there, but I think Ghost understands that there's going to be a plant going down. He has a clear line of sight, but they'll trade off. It's a big kill from Ghost to stop that defuse from going down, but now the rest of the Dream Team will have to come on in. Neptune's last alive, and it's Drip. Whether he's booling or not, he's got a very important entry and a good job as well on his team. An important job to do, hanging repelled on this sandwich window and he'll eat them all as they come through his line of sight. First round will go to 92 Dream Team. See, rotation watch rolls aren't that bad. It's really not the end of the world. It sometimes can be monotonous, but right location, right time there for Drip, and he uh, picked up quite a lot of kills in that first round. That was a well-executed attack onto the armory wall by 92 Dream Team, and not a whole lot in response from the Susquehanna Sonics. And we'll see if they can change things up or if they're going to shift the site. Seems like they're going to be sticking back onto armory. Are they, they're six picking their lesion. That's curious. Of all operators, they'll be pu pushing into an echo. I think that's sensible. They lost their maestro too early on in the last round and it cost Sonics the round. Now here's the thing though. It wasn't just that they lost the maestro early on. Losing the maestro early on was very bad for the Sonics. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it really took away from their presence on the armory site. But I think much more important is the fact that uh, they couldn't stop Dream Team from isolating the re like the rest of the defense from the site. When Dream Team set up so many basic angles onto Armory, and it seemed like Sonics didn't really have much of a response. Uh, apart from losing the Maestro, I think that's probably the most important thing from the Sonics, is they just, they didn't really have any presence whatsoever on their angles. They weren't actually playing to take fights, they were playing to deny the Diffuser, and Dream Team was more than happy to take the ground given by the Sonics, Establish extra angles, you know, for example, we had Drip on the uh, repel by Locker's window and, you know, deny the retake after taking out the Maestro, there was really nothing from Sonics. So Sonics is now, by bringing in Echo, doubling down on their original mentality for how to defend this. And, well, uh, if you're a Sonics fan, I gotta hope that that's gonna work. I was very impressed with how quickly the Dream Team's, Dream Team's movement was to take control of security slash monitors. It looks like they're going to waste no time to do the exact same thing again. In fact, almost all of this entry that's coming out from 92 Dream Team is a direct parallel to what we saw last time, taking out one of those security walls that Wild Doodle's having a little bit of difficulty with there for the time being to get the breaching charge out. And then another breaching charge going down just below as well if you need to rotate out of security. Very quick pacing that we see from the Dream Team as they all once again line up around this armory wall. 
I think they're gonna go for the exact same play here, but down goes AB and Rex in from below. You don't even need to expend that frag grenade. They do anyway, and that's gonna be another easy entry towards this armory wall. Neptunes who'd survive until the dying seconds of the round previously will be hunkered down inside of that half wall. The bunker, as it's often referred to as. We'll make it pushed off from below. Which just see what this Echo is going to do as well for Sonics, as they have just a bit of a small change, but just like when Goddess went down in the previous round, they'll find themselves behind early. It was a very methodical attack here so far from Dream Team, and it's much of the same we saw in the first round. Not really much of a response from Sonics, especially after losing the birds so early on. They, again, have very little presence. Though, Neptune's surviving in the half wall is going to be very important. As a Beautiful pick there from Rexon, taking out the Yokai drone. Neptune's putting in work in this round already, and having delayed the attack for so long, he really has been the highlight for the Sonics. The question is, how long can he persist at half wall? The odds of him rotating successfully are slim to none at this point, though it seems almost as if we might be seeing a rotate from the Dream Team. Oh, a nice angle from Rexon all the way from CCTV, and Neptune's goes down. A lot of people forget that you can see the top of your head behind that wall from a couple different angles, especially if you just walk right on in. That is almost mowing down what appeared to be AWD, but and just to survive at least for the time being, escaping the wrath of that LMG that can just chew up and spit out anybody that finds themselves in its sights. I don't think Super's been detected inside of Office. He's just going to continue to linger over there with his yokai left. It's going to have to be figured out, but Ghost's going to pop right on in. There wasn't much of AWD left, but it'll take him down. There's a yokai. As you'll see, it's a double action. Sonic's coming alive. I mean, Hyena will have to try and go for another plant, but there's too many coming on in, and it's Goddess just waiting, trying to find them all. Ghost will lie in his own smoke, but it's a big three-piece from Goddess. All the way from downtown, she'll shut every single member of 92 Dream Team down that dares to challenge her inside of Archives, and Sonics will equalize and push themselves to another site on the third round. Dream Team seemed to counter themselves in that round as they had control of Armory Wall, opened it up, had set up for the take, took out Neptunes behind half wall, and all the while we're shifting over to an office's take. I really don't know what the mentality was there, or what the thought process rather was for Dream Team. Uh, it seemed like they wanted to take Armory, and then it seemed like they were shifting to office, and then it, they shifted back to Armory in the dying seconds of the round. But at that point, they'd already lost their momentum. Uh, Sonics was allowed to establish a, a pretty stalwart defense on the actual Armory wall. Um, there was. And Dream Team was up against a wall that was the clock. So I'm, I'm confused about what exactly was going through the heads of Dream Team. They definitely did outplay themselves. Uh, good job to Sonics, though, for taking the opportunity given. They'll go down to ventilation now, uh, following their first successful defense on the armory site. Ventilation could be a little bit of a different uh, story than what we were just seeing. Probably going to be a lot of vertical play involved. Avian's going to be setting up for a bathroom hold, it seems, as we've got the back of workshop unreinforced. These castle barricades allow for a lot more maneuverability on the side of the defense, or at least prompting to the fact that the attackers are coming from tellers. Okay, not a lot of vertical play, actually, from the Susquehanna Sonics. That's... It's curious. They do have the hatch open inside a small office. So they probably be very commonplace to have somebody play up there. Like we have the armory wall is well reinforced. But it's curious that they don't have any of those castle barricades uh, set upstairs. It seems like if they are going to be roaming on the top floor, it'll be a little bit of a fall back and uh, hold the site toward of roam instead of a stalwart defense. Keep in mind, through the two previous rounds attacking on the Armory Archives site, it was 92 Dream Team who took monitors every yep. single round very fast. 30 seconds in, and it does appear, at least for the time being, that while they're going to take monitors again, they're not going to slow themselves too much. It's a bit of a split, actually. AWD is in there all by his lonesome, and there's not as much of a party up in security. Yeah, the best thing we've been seeing from Dream Team so far is the beautiful efficiency of their armory take. Uh, it's a very simple take, but uh, when you can refine those rolls down to taking as little time as possible, it does look beautiful. Uh, and we're seeing something a little bit slower here from 92 so far, so far in this round. They don't have any roamers to contest with on the top floor right now. And they have still taken a whole minute to take into this armory. Better safe than sorry, and I'm sure that they'll adapt moving forward but still a little bit of time wasted here by the 92 Dream Team. Everybody from the Sonics are on that first floor. You yeah. mentioned it yourself. There's not a lot of vertical play, which was Curious. really shown when that last castle barricade was getting put down by Avian, and every single member of the Susquehanna Sonics were down on that main floor. So 
That's a bit of missed timing there on behalf of the Pulse of Neptunes. He throws out the C4, it gets shot in the air. So you won't have any kind of explosive property on hand for the Pulse or for the Sonics unless Ghost has a C4 of his own. I mean, Drip wasn't even shooting at the C4, he was shooting at Goddess, which he managed to get the kill on, so a nice double play there with the C4. I think they call that a twofer. A twofer, yeah, definitely was. And that's some good uh, control established by 92 early on. It was a perfect opportunity as well to see exactly what we're talking about, about taking out that evil eye camera, two zaps, but AW ends up paying for the fact that nobody appeared to be watching. That after Neptune's C4 did not work, he rotated all the way upstairs. This is a very late rotate, but it's very likely that his position has been given away. And because of this, you've got Rexon in hot pursuit. Now pop up and he'll lose the fight to the F2, not even landing a shot as Neptune's behind that bunker wall unable to do basically anything to a gun with that rate of fire. Avian peeks into Tomas, not probably expecting somebody in there, but there's two bodies in, Ghost goes for one. Almost gets the second, but Hyena cuts him down to size. What is Super gonna be able to do? He doesn't have control, tries with the AUG is best, but no, the F2 is just a better gun, and Rexon was all prepared, holding the angle around the doorway. 92 Dream Team will take another round. Both of these teams seem destined to go back and forth give another opportunity for the Sonics to go back down to that workshop ventilation site. 92 Dream Team looking very comfortable here on border. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is their pick, so that would explain their comfort. A lot of these attack rounds have been pretty methodical. That last round, a little bit more cautious than, as, uh, than was necessary, really, from 92 Dream Team, but... Uh, Hey, better safe than sorry, and they still had plenty of time to actually execute onto the site. One thing that did happen there is that Dream Team got late flanked by Neptunes, and it really was not a great situation on the top floor. After Dream Team established control, they did not hold those flanks. So a mistake, certainly, but it did not cost Dream Team the round, which is the most important thing, thanks to Rexon, who has been winning that fight by Bunker every single time. Now, Nomad being brought here by the Dream Team and that would be probably in response to those flanks that we just saw from Neptunes in the last round. It's going to be a good answer. Those air jabs certainly going to, if nothing else, dissuade any roamers from attempting to flank. And uh, looks like Sonic's, though, actually going to be adjusting their strategy. This is beautiful to see. So not only is Dream Team adjusting to account for those late flanks, Sonic's is adjusting to account for, well, vertical control. It was weird that we saw Sonics not even try to hold the top floor on a ventilation defense last round. That is the go-to strategy, at least to delay. But now, Sonics is going to be adjusting back into that default strategy. They'll be going for a hold on the top floor, which makes a whole lot more sense and may just trip up Dream Team. This presence of the Vigil here, he might end up getting spotted out. It might be too much of a gamble for Super, but he's fallen quite off. You see those rotate holes, those impacts as you'd call them. Or rather, impacts those rotate holes so he can get away scot-free, which is exactly what he'll do. The cloaking device of Vigil doesn't come back as quickly as it used to, or doesn't last as long as it used to, rather, though it comes back faster than it did. If you've got a couple different members here, of Dream Team with the right tools, especially an IQ on the board. It means that this Vigil is going to be possibly in trouble, but no. He'll take out Drip. He baits the Thatcher on in, looks for the second, almost grabs it. Just a couple inches off of taking out the head of Odd, who will line up, find Super. You had Avian there for his backup. Wasn't in any position to possibly contest. He's too preoccupied with multiple angles, as now two drones have been thrown at Avian inside of offices. He might not be around for too much longer, but he's got some intel from Neptunes and the fact that those decoys are going to ping some of the aggressors, trying to take out what little is left of the bandit. Full HP still has a C4, so there's still a lot left of them. So the roam from Sonics here has cost them one player, but there was response and Super got that frag earlier. And it has much more importantly cost Dream Team a whole lot of time. Last time we had Dream Team take control of top floor with two minutes still on the clock. Here, we're already getting down to the last minute. So Dream Team need to adjust their strategy. They've had trouble with the top floor. They've still not been able to clear it. And at this point, they need to start focusing on the site if they want to have any hope of winning this within the time allotted. They threw a drone at AV and he panics, throws a C4 out, just anticipating somebody might be there. Maybe no panic. Maybe that's us reading into it too much, but he's still hunkered down and waiting. This has been largely 
ineffective entry so far from Dream Team. This will now be the fourth drone that has been fed Avian's way, and nobody's been able to take him down until Rexon gets him. Oh. There's a second body there present, though. It'll be Neptunes to bail out Avian. So the Sonics, who had had zero presence up on that second floor, investing quite a bit now on a different defense. Neptunes falls, though, and will leave us 30 seconds left with the two anchors, both Goddess and Ghost, looking to hang on for the Sonics down below. Neptune's managing to get a kill there is definitely good for the Sonics, but he really shouldn't have left his teammates' flank open for so long. Avian should still be alive in that round, in this round, and that would probably change the outcome. 20 seconds, though, for Dream Team. That's not a lot of time to work with, obviously, and there's still two anti-plant operators in play. Doodle is in a great position here, and he's going to take down Ghost. He just needs to find one more. That's Goddess deep inside a workshop, looking for the fight, and she's going to find it but lose it, or rather trade with Doodle. And it'll be 92 Dream Team taking that round. Three bodies upstairs for the Sonics. Three bodies, none of which were particularly connected to one another. Super Falls and their Avian wasn't really in a position because of where he feared Dream Team would push out of security. So Avian can't really do much to trade that one off. Avian falls, and then you see Neptunes push up, but that was really not Neptunes reading into it, but more him walking into the fact that a member of Dream Team ended up inside of archives. Though the alibi still could have gotten there in time. Maybe a bit too spread out, maybe a bit too much hesitation on behalf of the Sonics to not have themselves within striking distance of every single member of Dream Team that ended up in a, a possible encounter with them. That just leaves you in a position where 20 seconds to go and you got a Maestro and a Smoke on site, still very winnable, but Ghost gets shaken off of his position because of the breaching charge that goes above him, takes out a chunk of his HP at the same time, and you've still got really good guns on Dream Team's side. Say what you will about the preparation and the infrastructure that Sonics may have versus what might be on the side of Dream Team. But one thing that I think is undeniable is that every single member of Dream Team is an extremely hot hand when it comes to aim. They don't yes. really miss their shots. And because of this, if you put them in heads up positions, there might be times where they can just beat Sonics round by round based on gun duels alone. Now, Sonics is a much more experienced team. Um, but Very much so. We've been seeing we've been seeing some moments, uh, definitely from Sonics, where they have been just straight losing their fights to Dream Team, and that's why Dream Team find themselves up three one. But it also has to do with how Dream Team are conducting their assaults. I mean, their strategies just seem really not necessary. They're not intricate. They're not special. What we're seeing from Dream Team is just well rehearsed, well uh, defined roles for each individual player creating a nice strategy for the team as a whole, as each player on Dream Team seems to be executing what they need, when they need it, efficiently, and again, well-practiced. So, Doodle, inside of CCTV, looking for a kill in Fountain using his uh, oh, scanner there, but it's a reinforced wall that will prevent that from happening. Just gonna see Dream Team again, as you mentioned, taking control CCTV. This has been their go-to strategy for quite a long time now. And it's going to turn into an armory wall take. And typical efficiency here from Dream Team. Very standard stuff. And again, it's that well-rehearsed attack with the utility. Clear out the ADSs, allowing for the exothermic charge and the grenades. Actually, the only person who took any damage there from that frag grenade was Hyena, because it looked like it might have been misplaced. Either that or my eyes deceived me. Sonics have wised up to exactly what Dream Team is going to do on this armory wall take. They probably knew it coming on in, but they thought they might have had a strategy around it. This isn't the case this time. So, what have you done if you're the Sonics? Well, you've fallen really far back. This Echo is going to be trotted out yet again. The question is going to be, are you going to lose a Yokai early? Super had one available, which was very integral to be able to give that information to both Goddess as well as Ghost, and it's going to be in a similar position. Maneuvered over to the front of that armory wall to be able to watch any advance that might come out. So that drip here on the sandwich repel as well. So we've got a lot of similarities from Dream Team. Ghost in a position possibly to try and stop the plant. No! It's going to be a big push here from Dream Team. Three consecutive kills with Diffuser going down successfully. Goddess and Super will have to try and fight off the remaining members. But right now, that's four unanswered kills. Super might be able to start adding some to the tally, but he's in tough position. He's far away from that Diffuser. One third of the time gone, almost at the halfway mark. He's got one Yokai drone still up to be able to give him intel, but he's going to have to wander past two bodies. He's not going to get past Tomas. You two L85 staring in his direction, one on the sandwich rappel and the other by the armory door. 
That's Tomas who cleans things up. That's four rounds now of five for 92 Dream Team, who we might have said with a bit of interest. They took attack both times. Well, it seems like they're very comfortable here. Their attacks are extremely well rehearsed. Uh, I, it almost seems as if all of the practice time that Dream Team have uh, from... Well, we don't know, of course. It's an internal thing for them. But it almost seems like the all the practice time that Dream Team have was placed on their attacks, coordinating their attacks well and seeing what objective needs to be uh, taken care of one step at a time. Because Dream Team's attacks have been just so darn efficient. I mean, they're simple strategies executed eloquently. That's what we're seeing from 92 Dream Team. And I really like I really like that. I appreciate it. Sonix is not answering back is the really tricky part here. <sighs> Sonic's adjustment in that last round to the strategy they knew was going to be coming onto the armory wall was to bring an echo. That's what Sonics gave us. That's what Sonics tried to change from the past. And they brought an echo before it didn't work. It wasn't enough. That you know, consistent investment in off-site mentality from Sonics, I think, has been costing them a lot because Dream Team keeps winning those Armory attacks because they can isolate Armory and cut off the rotation back into Armory so well. Sonics needs to stop that from happening. The big question is, you have Ghost playing inside a small office. He is almost single-handedly tasked with stopping the default plan yeah. spot of 92 Dream Team. And the Dream Team know this. So what ends up happening? Well, they put the body on Sandwich, as you said, completely cuts off the rotate, and Ghost is essentially trapped in there unless he breaks through that hatch and falls, providing that hatch isn't reinforced inside a small office. So what do you do if you're Ghost? Well, he can't really have an ADS because they keep getting EMP'd by 92 Dream Team. The Yokais continuously get spotted and aren't really in a position to be able to assist him because even if Ghost pressures somebody who pushes him, which was Tomas last round, there's a trade factor in there for 92 Dream Team with Drip on Repel for Sandwich. So you're essentially trapped, and it's working out so well. Doing the same thing over and over again for the time being could work against most teams, but for Dream Team, they're actually making pretty good time as this game is going on, doing the same thing. It's working so well because Sonic's every response is just not enough. Well, we'll see if this small change they've made in this round is going to, well, affect the outcome of the round itself because it's a new attack strategy here from Dream Team and already starting to cost them, actually. Cyena goes down, that's no more Thermite. Your hard destruction gone, no Hobana in play, no Maverick in play, so... Well, this round just became really difficult. Border is a hard destruction heavy map. IQ finding herself in the desk corner will lose to Neptunes, and that's an early kill again for the Sonics. Oh. This round is just going so poorly, but wow, what <laughs> an answer back. I hate to see it. But yeah, I hate to see it, but it does happen. I hate to see it. I do be like that sometimes. Dream Team getting their first kill in the round off of a Twitch drone. Rexon has been fragging in every form. Another kill possibly for Tomas, but he misses his shots. Doesn't happen often to the Dream, Dream, Dream Team, but it's happening here. It's a C4 that missed as well, or rather hit its target but didn't do its intended purpose, which was to kill Tomas. He's now in a position where he's just waiting for the head of the bandit to show up. He'll miss him crossing. Cannot handle the recoil at all, but it's Drip there to take out Super. Traded off by Ghost, so both teams will lose one body. Tomas still very low on HP. He's knocking on the door, but it looks like he's going to go for a rotate with 50 seconds left. That's a good time to do so. He's going to give Rexon some scouting duty as he'll use his Twitch drone as best as he can, but he's all out of information. He knows somebody's going to be playing in small office, looking to see if there's somebody playing over by Sandwich. And the good thing about that F2 is that it's got great caliber-based destruction with that high rate of fire, allowing the Sledge to smash everything else open. But here's one problem. Haven't spotted Avian, who's on the flank. He'll catch Rexon. And only Tomas, who doesn't have very much HP in a situation that almost assuredly will go in the way of the Sonic, especially with 20 seconds left to go. Tomas is in a position where even one bullet will take him down. Doesn't really matter the gun. He's got castle barricades to go against as well, but there's Ghost to do what little was left of Tomas. The SMG 11 in hand for both operators, but it's Ghost will win this one out. And at least Sonics will emerge from their first defense with two rounds. They'll now go on to attack as we'll switch sides here, but still, it's a lead for the Dream Team at halftime. Uh, I agreed with you when you said that sometimes bringing the same strategy over and over again can be the undoing of a team. I don't know if you'd agree with me in saying that changing the strategy there was the wrong call for 92 Dream Team, but it you know, certainly was. Hindsight 2020, of course, but that's the thing. Dream Team could have established that it would have been a pretty bad push if they had simply droned out Office. I mean, Sonics was oddly heavily stacked on the Office Archive side of that 
a bomb site, which was, I'm not sure why, but hey, there you go. They predicted the attack from Dream Team, and Dream Team struggled quite a lot with Neptune's in office itself to begin with, and then the player in Fountain to follow that up, and then as soon as they got control of both of those two positions, they only had two players left, and they couldn't isolate their flanks. Avian just sitting at CCTV, free pick, and the round's over. So, I don't know, there's... That was a curious adjustment from Dream Team. I gotta say, my this, the thing that's screaming in my head is it really wasn't necessary because Sonics had no adequate response to the Armory Wall attack. And you threw away another potential victory on that Armory Wall attack. I don't know, it's curious. I like that they're trying to change and adapt, but it just ended up costing Dream Team. It's safe to say, I don't think the Sonics were getting any better yeah, figuring out what 92 Dream Team was doing, or rather, they probably had it figured out, but they didn't know how to counter. They did one thing differently. They half reinforced Armory Wall, and they opened up the other half so that they could deny the Thermite. And that might have been what caused Dream Team to change their strategy, but ah, I, they, there was a sledge. You know, open, open the wall. Yeah, I, I don't know. And I, I mean, I can see that call where you think to yourself, all right, we've, we've ran this three rounds in a row. It's tightening up. It looks like they might be able to have our number this time. Let's do something a little bit different, but... Yeah. I don't know. I, I I think that we could have seen what 92 Dream Team was capable of for a yet another attack onto that armory wall, and I think it probably would have been arguably just as successful as it was the times prior. At the same time, we have to give credit to Sonics for forcing that adjustment by slightly changing their attack onto armory and then investing in offices, knowing that they would, or expecting at least, that Dream Team would uh, adjust. So good job, to, good job to Sonics there. That gives them two rounds, so not a disaster of a half, but certainly not a good first half from Sonics. It's a very aggressive spot for Rex and Nabian for the time being. Yeah. As he can catch somebody coming on over through East Stairs, possibly anybody over on security as well. There's a small bit of debris that's been opened up or in that wall, or rather there's been a small poke hole or kill hole that's been opened up. For the time being, it's going to be a joint effort, and somehow that C4 completely missing Avian and gets away unscathed. Oh. That's poor timing. Neptunes has a frag grenade primed and ready, but he'll miss the bandit. And Drip almost takes down Avian in the process. That was a bit of a misplay there. That could have gone even worse from Sonics. It just looked like some rush decision making on their part. You see Super here on Sandwich Repel. Open up a uh, rotation watch. It's a hard angle to hold. We've seen uh, a lot of great play from Drip there. I believe it was throughout the uh, entire first half. But now as we're on second half, it's Sonic's time to hold that rotation. This time they're attacking onto offices though, so it's curious that he would do that. It's gonna leave the player by bunker kind of on an island, but it might not really matter as uh, Sonics aren't getting enough control here. They still haven't taken care of Fountain. They did just get Thomas though on the rotation that we were just talking about, but inside of Fountain is gonna be Rexon, and AWD is also gonna kill, get a kill of his own. Answer back here from Susquehanna though. So it's not all over on the attack. Despite them losing bodies, they still have a good amount of man advantage. And nice shot there from Ghost, despite missing the lifeline thanks to the ADS. Yeah, Rexon wasn't in a good position there to be able to get out alive at all. And it's going to leave Hyena, who's got one frag to his name so far, to try to find three more. Now, getting through Avian won't be that much of a challenge because of how low he is. Possibly even take him down with a couple zaps of that evil eye. Mm. But if the information from the Sonics points to Hyena's location, then this could go from bad to worse. And, well, there you have it. Ghost is going to have a hell of a range all the way from one side of the map to the other, upside down. He must have seen Endgame because he's doing his Spider-Man impression. Just waiting and watching, and he'll catch Hyena. There you have it. Nice shot. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> There's no spoiler there. Spider-Man is hanging upside down. Okay. Uh, Armory Locker's archives not successful for the Dream Team first go around. Um, and that's going to put... So uh, the Sonic's in a much better position. Okay, the first half was salvaged at the end, thanks to the great strategy and adjustment from Sonic's, which forced the hand of Dream Team to it move on to an office stake. That's that round right off the bat. The fact that Sonic's was winning their fights the same way we saw Dream Team winning their fights in the first half was, I think, the main takeaway. Sonic's much more comfortable here on attack. That's clear in terms of just actual winning gunfights. Um, and there really wasn't much else to say. I mean, Dream Team didn't have a lot of answer back. Some things that I find curious are, for example, the fact that Dream Team decided to play a player that's Rexin inside of Fountain and not reinforce Fountain Wall. Like, why? That's very curious. I just don't, I don't understand it. Um, 
little bit too much confidence there, maybe from Dream Team, or Rexon got caught off in his rotation and had to play in Fountain. No matter what, um, not a good, not a good situation there for the uh, for the Dream Team on the defense. We'll see if they uh, can get the right adjustments to sure up that hold. Same. Overall setup here, it seems, from Dream Team. They're going to be bringing a Pulse, probably to play downstairs. By the way, Pulse, one of those operators would have loved to have seen in the first half from Sonics, especially on those armory wall takes. I mean, there was not a lot of pressure downstairs. Why? The Buck's not there. So, a Pulse probably could have easily c forward from below. Even if it's a late rotation, you drop into, you know, through the small office drop, you c forward the planter. There you go. That might have been a solution. But, hey, we're on the second half now. Dream Team have already brought that solution, not even needing it in the first round. Sonic seems like might be lined up here to go for yet another take, but oh boy! Wow. And AWD is going to go fishing, and he's going to catch a uh, a Marlin or Neptunes in this case. Only set of frag grenades from Sonic will be off the board a minute on into this round, round number eight. And that is a pretty punishing blow to Sonics. Now, keep in mind, Avian almost got felled by a C4 on the previous round that almost puzzlingly was a bit too far, but could have been a major hindrance for Sonics. So we'll see what course correction they can do because it's, you know, having two frag grenades is quite nice, especially if you can burn through Rexon's ADSs that exist. You've got a Zofia just to do that on Ghost's side of things. Those ADSs will not be able to catch Super and oh no. Potential run out there, maybe? I was wondering what Super's... He's, he's cautious of one. He's very preoccupied by it. Almost yeah. like he could have possibly pulled the trigger Ooh. if Hyena's on the other side of that. Yeah, Ghost side giving away some information there. Yeah, this is odd. How close the Sonics keep coming, and this is where my pauses are coming from, is how close they keep coming to seeing somebody or expecting somebody from 92 Dream Team. It's just a good read on the way that the Dream Team is playing and part of why Sonics was able to take that first round, so. You can almost see the call the Dream Team made, and that is play passive. They're being a lot less aggressive than they used to be. I say that as one rotates into CCTV. Super almost caught that player in the rotation, but bad timing there from Super. As you said, coming oh so close, but still so very far for the Sonics. And a rush in from Ghost will get one, but answered back here. That's good angle play there from the Dream Team to have a refrag right after the push. <laughs> Trip was just lying prone in the that, site. That wasn't the good part. <laughs> With the Rexon over top of him. <laughs> Rexon was getting the, <laughs> Rexon getting the, that was the, that was a good part. He got the refrag. <laughs> so the Sonics will now begin to circle on in towards the archive side. You've still got full utility for the Capitao as well, not even on the crossbow for the time being. Just a bit of a poor reflex there from Super, but Goddess has his back. Taking down Rexon. And there you have it. Now, finally, the utility being used. Some smoke will at least obscure them, but on the flank, it's Odd. He'll take down Goddess. Super trying to use all of that magazine. Two for Odd. Looking for another as the Capitao's going to jump right on in. And Hyena will shut it down. Dream Team taking another round for themselves. That's five. Their first successful defense so far. And they're going to stretch their lead after the Sonics had tried to cut it down in the previous round. That's off the back of a 3K there from Odd. He got that C4 at the beginning, which was so important. It set the tone for the entire round and then comes up from behind. Why does he come from behind? Why can he do that? Because one less player on the side of Sonics, they don't have a flank watch. I mean, you don't have anyone to push into... You have to have everyone pushing into sight, so... It be, why do you have to have everyone pushing into sight? You haven't got any picks. And why? Because Dream Team have been playing almost entirely passive. That was a beautiful round from Dream Team. They adjusted completely to what Sonics was doing. And, well, Sonics playing angles, waiting for pushes, expecting kills to happen, and as soon as they weren't happening, it started really costing Sonics. Though, I have to say, there were like three or four situations there where it wasn't necessarily Dream Team being smart. It was more uh, Sonics just missing opportunities. Uh, a lot of, lot of opportunities for Sonics to get picks and the delivery just not being there. Unfortunate to see on the side of Sonics, and now we're getting very close to match point for Dream Team. It is their map, but at the same time, this is a lot more one-sided than I think most expected. Uh, I almost thought we were gonna see a complete sweep back from Sonics, but Dream Team clearly also has chops on their defense. The previous matchups between these two teams were a 6-6 draw and a 7-5 victory from the Sonics. So, I mean, yes, technically Sonics have the tiebreaker by, you know, two points, yeah. but it's still been pretty close between the two of them. 
time, right? And yes. th I, I feel like the Dream Team have been playing better the longer they've gone on. I think adding Tomas has really changed up the way that the team plays. You know, Hyena's been on more support-oriented roles, which has taken him off the ability to frag well on roles where he needs to be able to do that. Hyena's still capable of fragging. You know, we saw that in the six Invitational Qualifiers. He can still help try to carry a team. He was the player who was infamously promoted to dock, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. But he, they don't really need him for the time being, and the rest of the team doing a great job of that. I think we saw 18 kills on the scoreboard between the top two teams, or the top two players right now. 19, rather, between Rexon and AWD. So, with those contributions in mind, Dream Team have some star players, that's for sure. And that is a big difference between them and Sonics. Right now, we're seeing a lot more team-oriented play from Sonics, but at the same time, it's... Uh, I mean, it just hasn't been fantastic what we've been seeing from Sonics in terms of in terms of their actual. Well, they've just been losing fights. I mean, the last round, the the last or the first attack round rather was where we start seeing or we started seeing Sonics actually really come alive, and it seemed like we were gonna have. Again, I thought we were gonna have a reverse sweep, but after that last round we just witnessed, Dream Team know how to play against Sonics. Just don't peek angles and use C4s for indirect wins on those fights. Drip Ball in getting a early kill there onto the bird. That's Avian. And AWD, Doodle himself, getting another one as well. So, okay, Dream Team now, a two-man advantage. Are we, are we going to a 6-3 just like that? It does appear that way. I mean, after that very first defense of 92 Dream Team, their C4s have had magnets in them, it appears, being able to hit everybody, but, <laughs> oh, no. Three of the kills so far, two of them have involved explosives, as that's Goddess being able to get a bit of a chuckle there as AWD goes for a run out and probably not a bad run out, but oh no, Ghost inside of the site doesn't understand that Rexon might be in hot pursuit. It's going to leave Goddess in a position to tussle with Tomas looking the wrong way and it's just the dream team now with draining every single three pointer that they throw for the time being. Poor uh, Neptunes. Do you notice that the strategy here at the end, oh, Neptunes actually gets a pick here. He's in a 1v3 and it could have been one, but not quite. I would say the, uh, the light inside of that site got that kill in particular. What do you mean? The light that obscures the ability to see like all oh, the Oh yeah, the lighting in, in Workshop. The light in Workshop, that light that just shines down it's, like it's, a... Yeah, it's like they fix the lighting on every map everywhere except for stuff. specifically in Workshop. Hey, you want to see through the door? Not today. Nope, you don't get to see there. You don't get there. to see through the door mm -hmm. today. Yeah, it's a well-known issue with Border, but now, okay, that last round, okay, what happened? Sonics set themselves up to get picks. I think they were trying to take top floor control. I'm not entirely sure. It seemed like Sonics was confused about what they were actually trying to accomplish in that round, not going to lie. But then when they don't get picks, what is the strategy from Sonics? Let's try and crouch walk into sight. <laughs> the last three players from Sonics just tried to inch their way into sight sneakily without getting any kills. We saw the Zofia actually make it before dying to Rexen, but it then it was just the last two. Okay, guys, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta make it. Into I don't know what the thought process was there from Sonics. I really don't. Uh, it seemed like they started off trying to take Armory. They got CCTV, they tried to take Armory, and then you can isolate vents and then hit the site, right? But then they couldn't get Armory, and then everyone just kind of went their own way. You see that in the very final round, Sonics is trying to change things up. They've moved Avian onto the Capitao, Goddess onto Hard Breach. So you've taken Avian off of that Thermite roll. You're going to bring a Hibana instead because, well, if you look at the rotation that's happened so far, you know that one of the two sites that need to be defended by the 92 Dream Team are going to be either Customs or Bathroom. Yeah. It's the first time we're seeing this in this match, uh, a third or the alternate sites uh, being brought out. And it's Customs instead of the Tellers or Bathroom. Uh, from Dream Team. I mean, it's really it's kind of whichever you're more comfortable with. Both sites are equal in how you play them, in how you know defendable they are. So you can't really judge anyone for going to customs over tellers or otherwise. So Susquehanna Sonics setting up here to hit onto the A bomb site. It seems they're going to have to take CCTV control first, and that is well set up defense here from Dream Team. Dream Team is aware that they need to hold on to CTTV if they want to win this round, at least for a large period of time. Rexon is going to be instrumental in this defense. Playing inside of Armory, he could deny West balcony pressure onto CCTV. Looks like Hyena's been spotted, though, and mm -hmm. there you have it. He's been droned down. It looks like he might get flashed, and there's going to be essentially a utility dump. Sledge out the castle barricade, drop something in, but Odd is there. Doodle 
with the opening frag onto Mr. 1.6 himself, who will be spending the next 1.5, rather, minutes of this matchup on the bench. Yeah, Doodle has been so good with those early picks in this match, and he's just going to keep that going. The lack of picks here from Sonics, again, being so important. Is the ADS cleared? Yes, it is. And a beautiful grenade there from Neptunes. As Hyena goes down, that CCTV still established it. Oh, Neptune's a double! Beautiful play from the Sledge, and that might have just recovered the round. And there you hear the utility being used from the Capitao too. One of the asphyxiating bolts, it's going to start ticking away. But there's Goddess right now, dealing with the smoke that was thrown out. Tomas has fallen. This will be a successful plant down for the Sonics as they'll look to keep things close. But even though Tomas hasn't been picked up, it's going to be essentially a 3v2. Drip gets taken out by Avian, so the only person left is Odd, but he'll pick up Tomas. Dude will just be there to wait. Tomas can only move on in. He's got the toxic canister, but oh, look at all those bullets from Avian. He'll just try to mow everybody down. It's going to be a lockout from the Sonics. A good turnaround for them to take a site that teams struggle to hold on defense. And even though Super was taken out early, it did appear that the Sonics, who were in trouble, did a masterful job of regaining their momentum. Now it'll go up to Armory, though, and here's where the hard part begins. That last round, gotta say, recovered so well by Neptunes. The fact that he was able to take control of CCTV single-handedly almost. The only contribution from his teammates or the clear of the ADS by the long desk. So great job there to Neptunes. Uh, the round seemingly was going to go straight to Dream Team, but it was just barely saved. Now, we'll go to Armory. As you said, this is going to be the hardest part for Sonics because... Yes, Sonics just did win a round. Yes, Neptunes had a great round individually, uh, and the lockout after the plant was beautiful by uh, the Susquehanna Sonics. But can they win another attack onto Armory? They did manage it once before. It was the first round of the second half. But in that round, the reason that uh, Dream Team lost was because they kept giving away picks. They kept playing at open angles, and Sonics was just waiting with open arms. After that round, Dream Team changed their entire strategy. They have since become much more passive, played safe, and Sonic struggles to get over that hurdle. Uh, they managed it last round beautifully so, again, thanks to Neptunes, but I don't know if that's going to be the same story here on an armory defense. We approach the point at which I believe uh, you refer to this round as Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Likely, I mean, we do have a pulse, so there'll be a little, be a little bit of play offsite at least. So, but uh, most of these players are going to be, I think, really invested in actually playing objective-based, which is going to contain everyone in a, in a in an environment which you get a lot of brawling, a lot less, uh, you know, angle play, slow stuff. Probably more more brawling, but I mean that also depends on uh, the Susquehanna Sonics actually going for those aggressive plays, and I don't know if they're going to be capable of that. The angle play has not been working out for them. The slow angle play hasn't, and it's because Dream Team are aware of it and are slowing down to accommodate it. It seems like a lot of times that Dream Team are able to get that opening frag that they just kind of steamroll from there on out, and the last round that we just saw was a bit of an anomaly. I mean, on attack, they were very successful at it. They'll have to rely on it a bit too much, I think, in this round, because they just lost control of office, they're going to fall back to archives, they're just going to wait. Well, it's been a decent round in terms of efficiency so far from the Sonics. Not the most amazing. They've gotten office open. Like you said, they've gotten control of office. They have some information here that could net a kill. This aggression from Drips could cost Dream Team quite a lot, but he's actually not going to peek it. Instead, he rotates into Fountain. So an interesting rotation there. That's going to be a really important position to hold. I'm curious if the wall is fully reinforced or not this time. This actually looks like excellent drone work as well from the Sonics right now. It's true. The coverage that they've had, they've been able to find most members of the Dream Team and be able to get the drones away without much worry. The only real question is what's going to come up with Doodle down below, the Ooh. pulse. He gets spotted and pinged, and there's going to be an IQ in hot pursuit. Takes a tiny bit of his HP away. Whoa, what a peak! Oh! That's a throwback to when he used to go by Yardy, but that's a beautiful kill from Drip. And now there's another as Neptunes doesn't check his corners. And that just might be the round, Michael. Yep. It certainly looks that way. Sonics tried to clear underneath. They knew the C4 was going to be a huge force leading into the end of the round, but they failed to take down the Pulse and, in fact, lost two players in that endeavor. Oh, no. 
Ghost might be able to get the drop here on Drip. Bandit's not looking the right way. Oh, but as the wall blows up, it's a doodle from below. Leaving Goddess and Super in a position to try and keep this together. They'll find Tomas, but oh, everybody's peeking. Peek, peek, don't stop peeking. Goddess will take one down, and she knows that Doodle's gonna try to aggress from the stairs. That's exactly the case. She'll find two, but she's got 15 seconds left. She holds the diffuser, so she has things working in her favor. There's gonna be multiple sites looking at her as he tries to get in towards B. But everybody's gonna be very patient. The team that would not stop peeking have realized that now is the time to stop. She's gonna start getting tased, and that's gonna be all she wrote. The 92 Dream Team will take their map, map number one, and they'll push us over to Clubhouse. 7-4 scoreline, not too bad. I think surprising. Quite a number of people's expectations. Before this match, Michael, I saw a lot of 2-0 Sonics on social media. You gotta think those people's brackets have been busted. Yeah. Great game for the 92 Dream Team. Very impressed. Yeah, their border play was absolutely on point. You really gotta hand it to 92 Dream Team. And on the side of the Sonics, they really did seem a little bit lost. I mean, we had... We had a couple good rounds from Sonics, but it just seemed like they fell into a good round. You know, like not that they, they carved their way into it, but it just happened. Um, and on the side of 92 Dream Team, they were constantly adapting to their enemy. It was beautiful. There was one good adjustment from the Susquehanna Sonics, and that was when they decided to open up the armory wall on their last armory defense, which forced 92 Dream Team into an office take. And the Sonics were there to deal with an office take. They stomped on 92, and that was the only really noticeable ray of sunshine I saw from Sonics through that whole match. There were so many rounds where all it really boiled down to was 92 Dream Team just peaking angles. That's true. That, that last round was like a highlight reel of the game for a lot of these different rounds that the 92 Dream Team put together, where it's just like, they don't really have tons of info. We commended mm -hmm. the fact that Sonics were so good at being able to drone out every single member of 92 Dream Team. And the moment they got droned down, it seems like they just opened fire right away, anticipating a push. And they were right on two separate occasions, which is what really blew everything open. And then you had Doodle down below, able to get that C4 off. And at that point, it's a 5v2, I think it was. Something and like it's that. just... I mean, the... The round was pretty much over as soon as uh, the roam clear downstairs did not work out. If we're talking about the last round, that last round, as soon as uh, Susquehanna Sonics couldn't clear out the bottom floor, that was it. You know, they invested two players in that. They got no kills from it. The C4 was still in play from the pulse, and then that's the third kill right there from below. That's why they tried to clear out the pulse. They knew it was going to be so relevant. But I don't know. Overall, it just seemed... Plain and simple that 92 Dream Team were much more prepared for border. I think that that was just, they were really well prepared on that map. They clearly practiced it heavily. That's why it was their pick. Uh, here you can see a little infographic. This is showing what happened through the match and you can see who won which round and how they won it. Now you might not be able to tell because Every single one of these rounds seemingly was won on kills, which is, yeah, there you go. I mean, there were some diffuser plants, but. We have, so we do have uh, two other icons that are in there, one of which is a stopwatch, which is to show you that they ran out of time and that the clock ended up winning it for the defense. Yep. And then there's another, which is a bomb with it, like a slash through, which means that they were able to break the diffuser and, and stop the attackers, essentially. But yeah, this was a, this was a pure, uh, this was a pure fight. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I have one successful diffuser down over 11 rounds. It was I, I might have missed it. I, I don't remember any other customs. ones because... I, I don't remember another diffuser going down successfully. Yeah, in the first half, it was Susquehanna Sonic. No, no. They, I think they did have one. They did have one. There was another one. Why did you Dream Team yeah. get one on attack? Because uh, I remember specifically an Echo trying to retake from Archives. That's right. Super. Yeah, Super tried to retake Correct. from Archives. He lost. The diffuser was down. So we had like that was, two... That was round five. But, but every one of the rounds was one on fragging throughout that match. So only two diffusers down in 11 rounds. Yeah. And they weren't a factor. The team that planted the diffuser still won the actual round, so you don't need to worry about playing the objective. This was almost pure TDM. Yeah, I mean, you could say it comes down to that. Um, I think that 92 Dream Team really pushed Sonics into, you know, 92, 92's realm. I think that very comfortable for the Dream Team uh, on border. I don't know how that's going to change on Clubhouse. Is that the, That's our map number two. Yes. I, I think you... You know, I'm thinking about Clubhouse, and honestly, I want to say 
it would be a more objective focused map but at the same time we often see clubhouse matches where it's based more on time than anything i think time is one of the bigger factors for that map is there's so many layers of the defense to peel away and oftentimes it comes down to an actual just brawl in the last 15 seconds on this map i mean there are a lot of plants that can happen in cash for sure or in gym on gym bedroom as well as even on church wall by black box or if you want to go deep armory i get it there are plant potentials but i see so often this map coming down to just time the other thing too to note here is border and clubhouse were just played by the sonics against disrupt 92 dream team played coastline in oregon in their match against organized chaos the sonics played Clubhouse is their second map. They lost it 5-7 to Disrupt. They played Border, and Disrupt came out to a... I think they were up 3-0, and then the Sonic stormed back, ended up taking the matchup 7-5. There's footage for both of these maps that the 92 Dream Team could have conceivably watched, and surely did. Yeah. They're going to have all of the ways that Disrupt were able to exploit Sonic's weaknesses on clubhouse on the other hand 92 dream team played none of these maps in uh in those semis they played coastline Oregon villa as you as you stated so it's yeah it's um that's not that's not exactly perfect for sonics but i don't know it's recoverable additionally 92 dream team added tomas to the roster and then switched up their roles yeah and they so, didn't even play Villa. So, it, it was so on top of that, <laughs> so on top of that, it, how hard is it for you to counter strat a team that is coming in with new strats, presumably with new roles? You know, we yeah. know that much it is sure. So presumably new strats, definitely new roles, possibly a map pool that might favor them. I mean, the two maps that 92 Dream Team hated playing were both Bank and Villa, and they banned both of them. Could end up being pretty favorable, and and this is this could be worrisome for the Sonics. Though I will say this much: the Sonics are starting on defense on Clubhouse. Yeah. Which is where I would want to start in this particular matchup. But the big problem is, is that 92 Dream Team have shown their prowess on attack on border. That's... And while Clubhouse, I would say, is probably more favorable to the defense. Oh, yeah. I still would worry with the fact that this was the Sonics pick and 92 Dream Team wanted attack to start with. That's the curious thing is that 92 Dream Team have been going for attack in every single available opportunity. And it's the same thing for Dream Team, but in reverse, or, or sorry, no, no, it's same thing for Sonics, but in reverse, Sonics seem to always want to defend. It's a complete difference in mentality for uh, for this match. And I mean, I, I, if we actually get to consulate, that'll it'll make it really interesting uh, because those sides are not yet pre uh, predetermined. Now, on, on Clubhouse here, as we stated, Sonic starting on attack, Dream Team starting on defense, or wait, was that right? Yeah, start Sonic starting on defense and then Dream Team starting on attack. So it's the opposite of what I was saying. That's going to, I think, be a good thing for Dream Team overall, because again, as you said, it just seems like the attacks from Dream Team are really well coordinated. And that's what we saw from the first half of Border. Very simple strategies, well executed, efficiently executed. And I think that's one of the main takeaways. And again, on a map like Clubhouse that is so time oriented, at least for me, I think that that's going to be a huge boon for 92 if they can be as efficient as they were on border. It depends on how much practice they actually invested into refining their strategy here on Clubhouse. Now, funny enough, the Sonics banned out Buck against 92 Dream Team. They answered by just putting a, a sledge in play, you know, every single round. Now, the real question becomes, Clubhouse can be played so wildly different depending yes. on what is banned. If you ban, uh, for example, two hard breachers, the way that Lestream did against Empire just a couple weeks ago, it fundamentally changes the way that the attackers can play. The Sonics will get the very first ban. Are we going to see a possible Maverick ban? No, they're going to ban Thatcher. And Thatcher was an integral part of every single push that 92 Dream Team had on border. He's also an incredibly strong operator on Clubhouse. Yeah, he's actually just, I mean, while well, he's obviously incredibly strong anywhere, he's such a powerful operator. Having him gone is going to certainly hurt any attacking team. Habana on Clubhouse is also a very powerful ban. That's going to be a less drop downs that will be opened up in all likelihood. It'll also force you into a Maverick and Thermite for pretty much the entire match for both teams, probably. Uh, I don't see many rounds where you're not bringing either of those, especially given the Thatcher ban. This is recoverable for the attack, both attacks, but losing a Thatcher and a Habana is certainly a crippling blow. Uh, Mira and Echo as the last two defenders. 
So Mira is going to make defending cash really difficult, as well as, def well, not really difficult, but more difficult at least. And uh, the same with Jim. Less influence on basement, but still will make, if you are trying to play aggressive on the bottom of main stairs, then not having the Mira is going to hurt that. Echo is just an annoying operator to play anywhere, so getting rid of him, uh, or rather play against. So getting rid of him is going to be a boon for any attacking team. Now, Operator selection coming out here. Buck is available, which you noted was not the case in the previous map. It's both hard destructors, as expected. Capital being brought. Capital is going to be very important in cutting off rotations, especially on this map. There are some key places you can put uh, one of Capital's arrows to just completely cut off rotation between the two sites, forcing people into blue. And if you have a line of sight into blue, you're cutting that rotation off by yourself manually, maybe through the drop down then that is going to be a death trap for the defense. It's a common strategy here on basement to try and take church wall, especially if there's no Habana. Try and take church wall, use the capital bolts to cut off rotation in the main hallway and by blue, or just one or the other. Then watch the other with uh, actual gun from above and get some picks on the rotations that are going to be forced by the defense. Perfect. So, I don't know, we'll see what actually happens, but that's, there's a lot of options still for the attack despite losing a Thatcher and a Habana. I'm really too surprised to see them starting downstairs on Church either. You ban out Thatcher, you're gonna run the kite. That's just the way it works. Yep. Unsurprising. It's gonna mean that a Maverick is essential here. It's also gonna mean that you're going to have to try to maybe juggle which hatches you go after. You can juggle on that uh, kitchen hatch pretty easily just by vaulting up on the box. You can also put a mute jammer on the kitchen hatch, uh, but it just and then you once the mute jammer catches something, then you use the electro call to delete it and then pick the electro call back up before the EMPs come. But with Thatcher ban, that's just not going to happen, and uh, none of this is necessary uh, according to the Sonics as they've pre-placed their electro claws. So, uh, yeah. I mean, they don't necessarily have to impact Trick or anything with no Thatcher, but Maverick is it's a, a viable substitute on dropdowns for Thatcher in some instances. Uh, for example, by Moto, uh, I don't think Maverick's going to be able to open it up because you can put the electric cost so far away that he can't see it. I am a little interested if this was a smart move by the Sonics based on, you know, the way that 92 Dream Team plays. They ban Mira almost every single matchup. So you know that they're probably not going to ban the Kaid. If that's the case, then you're free to essentially use the Kaid as best as you can. And despite that, there's a ways around it. As I said, the Maverick is able to take out the hatch. That's exactly what happens in that main bar. Yeah, so because you can't uh, take out the Electro Claw in any way, you have to you invest much more Maverick into that instead of getting the Electro Claw and thermiting it. But that's perfectly fine if you're an efficient Maverick main. You can still get two drop down or drop hatches with those uh, with the Maverick blowtorch. It's just again you have to be efficient with it. So it's possible for uh, Doodle to get another one. Rexon just creeping his way into blue. He might actually be able to get some picks here. Nice shot there by Drip. Long angle being played by Neptunes and an opportunity missed by the Legion. Less traps going to be in play here. Opening up prone level onto Church Wall is curious by the attack. It's actually going to hurt the rotation of potential in that hallway quite a lot if there's any defenders who can play this efficiently. But Doodle's doing a really good job of using these holes. They don't really seem to know where the Sonics are located inside a church either, which is why they're kind of just firing on in as best as they can. Super's going to take advantage of that. But Tomas and Doodle are there with two of their own. Avian cuts down Doodle, just watching the door over by the bar fridge with Ghost watching a door of his own. Two members of the Sonics will try to watch at least multiple entries in. C4 goes out from Ghost. He's going to catch Rexon. No! How does Ghost lose that fight? Oh my god! But Rexon ends up out dueling him. So, there are certain things that can happen throughout the course of a best of three that will um, set the tone for the entirety of the match. That first map was really, I'm, I'm guessing, dis disheartening for the Sonics. But that round was a was much worse. Not only was that uh, a pretty one-sided affair for 92 Dream Team taking that pretty handily, uh, especially considering the operator bands, that's impressive. But on top of that, there were some seriously egregious mistakes being made by the defense, period. I mean, there's not much else to say. Um, 
And that, that sort of thing really does set the pace for the rest of the match. That, that's hard to bounce back from. Something, something's gonna need to happen on the side of the, uh, uh, on the side of the Sonics. Something, you know, spectacular if they really, if they're gonna want to bounce back at this point. Cause that, that just didn't look like a team versus a team. That looked like, um, I don't know. It just, it was a pretty one-sided affair. That's all, that's all I'll say. I, <laughs> how much do you think the nerves are the possible? Oh yeah, pressure? definitely really just plays into Sonics right now. This is the biggest game that the Sonics, as well as the 92 Dream Team, have ever played. For the 92 Dream Team, they are now six rounds away from Pro League. Should be a return for Tomas, but a debut for the rest of them. Yeah. How much do your expectations fall short of the Sonics? The team that a lot of people had breezing through North American Challenger League this season. Yeah, they absolutely are the favorite team in Challenger League for NA. Uh, they've got all the perks that everyone else doesn't have. And I think that that is the problem. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure that comes with that. It's not like, oh yeah, you're the favorite team, so you're sure to win it. It's, you're the favorite team, but you've been here before. You've done this before. And sometimes that pressure, it just keeps mounting and mounting. And it, I, you lose map number one, and you lose the first round so spectacularly, uh, it's not... Mm. But, I mean, it's all speculation. We could see a beautiful comeback here. I want to see map number three. If we do get to it, it'll be consulate. For now, though, Doodle doing his best to open up the wall. So you can open up the top and the bottom, and it breaks the reinforcement. There you go. Doodle has taken out one of those reinforcements, and it will be opened up likely by the buck. Here comes Thomas with that buck. The buck was banned last time around. Tomas will just be running the buck with good diligence. It's a really good way to deal with Electro Claws because they're not as predictable as the bandit batteries. And here's what you were talking about earlier. Rexton taking out an evil eye. Why does Twitch need a buff? We don't know. She got one. It's pretty substantial. That's very strong. And and it's yeah. not even that it's very strong. It's that you've now used two tases out of five on one of those drones. And you've taken a pretty handy tool that Goddess and the rest of her team would have available. Oh, Avian almost getting drip. That one HP is all that it needs. Wow. Super possible opportunity here now to get a kill down below. Sees one and he'll take out Rex in a beautiful shot onto the Twitch. That's a good one. It's going to leave Drip as well at 1 HP. Possible time for reset, one minute left if you really want to, but both teams now finding themselves down one apiece. I haven't seen a reset in so long, but it looks like it actually might be happening. I think Drip downed himself on the uh, with the Electro Claw and is... Or no, no, it wasn't a deliberate reset. There's no one near him. He got downed by the Electro Claw on the still persisting wall, and now his teammates have to rotate with only 40 seconds left. That's not fantastic. He'll pick him up as the rest of the Sonics are just waiting to try and hold map control. Supers down below has not been spotted. You also have Ghost right now sitting inside of construction. Also has not been spotted. Neptune's playing by this bathroom wall. He's going to lose some of it, playing by the reinforcement. Shotgun out. Oh, <laughs> he just finds them lying down. Two kills for the Sonics looking for another, but Tomas will be able to win the fight against Neptune. Still an advantage that favors the Sonics with the body down below. Goddess will find Tomas looking the wrong way. And while Hyena takes out Ghost, he's going to just need to pull out any Goo mine in his foot, but no, we get taken out by Goddess again. A big two rounds, or a big two kills in the final round of Goddess. Yeah, Goddess, whenever she's allowed to play these angles like this, just absolutely shreds her opponents, and that's what we just saw there. A uh, beautiful job from her holding it together, the glue of that team in that round in particular. Um, there was some pretty great stuff there from the uh, Susquehanna Sonics, and it all started, in my mind, with Super coming from the tunnel. That pick was beautiful. Surprised that Rexton left himself exposed to that angle. It's a very common angle to play for defense late in the round onto Jacuzzi Balcony. But it did happen, and uh, Rexton not being there, lots of frag power just gone for 92 Dream Team. They got the wall open, and they had the attack going. But it just didn't look right uh, after that. Uh, Dream Team started giving away picks and had no real actual push. Now, they didn't have a push. It didn't seem like they were trying to accomplish anything at that point, just playing to take fights. Nobody from Dream Team really seemed to have any information as to where the Sonics were either. Well, you, that's something we haven't talked about a lot, is that while, yeah, Sonics has had good droning, who hasn't had good droning through the whole match? Dream Team. Yeah. They've been winning heads-up gunfights based on instinct, I think, an awful lot. And yeah. when they get counter-droned, then they understand that somebody might push them, so you just go for broke. 
Yeah. Peek around a corner, fire in. But... And you could say a lot of respect to uh, Dream Team for being able to just win fights. But yeah, it'd be cool if there was a little bit more information gathering from Dream Team. I feel like that would definitely pump them up as a team. One thing I was thinking about earlier is that they, the attacks that we were seeing on Border looked a lot like um, the efficiency level was near to like Empire. But what wasn't there was, and this is really key, uh, information gathering. It's like there just wasn't any. The reason that the armory attacks are working so well for 92 Dream Team is because you don't need to information gather. You clear CCTV, which is very little drone work, and then you open the armory wall. And because the enemy wasn't playing underneath, I mean, what do you need? Just, just attack. You're done. So it's, it's, like, it's like we're seeing some great top tier one efficiency here from 92 Dream Team, but they're just missing parts of like basic attacks. They've fallen off the Kaid here as they defend over on the cash side as well. Uh, that was two rounds with the Kaid, and I think they come to the determination that he wasn't the most, I guess, useful tool for them this time. They're going to switch to the Bandit instead, which is super on the Bandit instead of Avian, who was playing him for most of the previous game. You've got Avian now on an anchor roll alongside Goddess, who's likely going to be on an anchor roll through most of this game. Or support if you're looking at attack as well. I mean, uh, the Bandit at this point is probably just a comfort pick because the way that we've been seeing 92 deal with these walls, it's just the Maverick play. And the Maverick play is not counterable by Bandit Batteries or Kai Electro Claws. So, mm, just going to be a nice MP7, three speed, typical stuff. You know, you get those German operators sometimes just to frag, and that will be a comfortable spot for Super to find himself in, assuming he can make it work. This is dangerous for the Capital. He's not repelling on the bottom, he's repelling body exposed on the top. And that's. Definitely not an easy, easy angle to play. This garage pressure now that's coming out from 92 Dream Team. You might not know where Neptune's is down below. There's still another body as well from Sonic who are up top. It's Goddess who's playing there right now. She's been shaken off of her post. She's got an ADS next to her for some good measure. The drone goes in and she'll take down the barricade rather than the Capitao. The one thing that you'll see from Drip with that para though is that he's not going to have that immense amount of bullets they will possibly be able to use to tear through anybody in his way. Scare off the push down below there as now Drip will use one of the asphyxiating bolts and just miss out on getting Avian when Neptune's down below as well. But Rexon gets two kills, he walks right in. It's all Dream Team right now, nothing but net. Four kills to leave Super off site to possibly try and get back. It's gonna start off with Doodle, go head towards the garage, get aided by a grenade from Tomas. C4 goes on up. But there's a diffuser down, and Super's at full HP. He'll make his ascend up the red stairs. And once again, I would imagine the Dream Team is going to practice very good patience. He'll just sit and wait and try and see where Super can get to, possibly to the diffuser over by B. There's a tase, but he's getting shocked from the Twitch drone of Rexin. They're just playing with their food at this point. Multiple drones that have been saved up from 92 Dream Team will now come out, and Super will get punished by Rexin. Three kills for Rexin on that round. You know, again, it, it, really weird because we saw 92 Dream Team just kind of walk into sight. You said it in the middle of the uh, middle of the action there. Rexon just decided he wanted to be in sight, and so he trotted on in. The hold in Garage was not non-existent almost. It felt like from uh, the uh, Sonics. We had a dock in there, but he didn't really accomplish anything. Soft wall on one panel of the garage, reinforced with bandit batteries on the other. Little to no support from his teammates. And why? Because the wall's already opened up. No rotation potential. So the dock decides to stay in there. He gets picked off. Garage control in the way of the attack. From there, it was just, I mean, it was a pretty la easy launch straight into the site. We might have seen something different if, for example, a mirror was available. But since she's been banned, I don't know. It's It's... It's really interesting the way that that round ended up playing out, but one thing that really stands out to me personally is the lack of presence on server that we had from the Susquehanna Sonics. Um, it's just disheartening is the word I would use. And it's the same problem that they had on Armory Defensive Border. It's, it's identical. You know, it's like you know where the attack's going to come from. You know what you're going to have to confront, but you're not bringing the tools to confront it. A nice try, though, from Sonics. I mean, they did bring a Bandit to try and C4 from below, uh, which was, you know, a good idea. But since it was the only thing that ended up being between uh, the attack and winning that round, it ended up not being, not, not mattering at all. So we'll see what can be made in terms of adjustment from the uh, Sonics this time around. They have brought a Pulse instead of a Bandit. They realize the batteries are kind of redundant. 
Uh, and instead, they're going to opt for the heartbeat detector on that C4 from below. I think that is sensible, but I also think, again, it will probably be countered by 92 Dream Team. The Garage left fully unreinforced this time, and there's no presence in Garage either. This is huge! Rexon just gets to walk into Garage with absolutely no contention whatsoever. How does... It seems to be the strategy from Susquehanna Sonics, but that is going to be, I think, really bad for the defense. This must be a, either a very retake-heavy setup, yeah, or it's going to be a full construction defense for the time being. What? I mean, but you've got Castle Barricades lucky to slow down their advance. It's not going to be there this time because they're all just completely absent. So you've got many bodies far back on red stairs. You've got them over towards the cash side of things. But this looks pretty good for the time being. Now, mind you, things aren't always as they seem. This could be a trap that has been laid out by the Sonics for the time being. And given that there's a pulse on the board, there's probably some information that's being given about the whereabouts right now for 92 Dream Team. This seems to be exactly it. We've got reinforced walls and castle barricades downstairs. Oh, Rex and coming close to death. But yes, lots of presence downstairs. You can see that Doodle's doing his best to deal with that using the Maverick. He's got the C4 from the Pulse. He tries to pre-fire that Pulse. Going for another Torch. He's exposing himself simultaneously. As exposing, they're at the same time rather, of, as exposing the Pulse. So this is not exactly easy for Doodle to do, but he's managed to distract Pulse at, at the very least. Rexon walking into sight, and he has a lot of control here. No counter as he pushes into Cash, but he gets shut down by Super. You see Hyena coming up from behind, able to take down Super as well. So good back and forth here that it seems the Sonics are coming out on top of, and they still have presence downstairs. This is pretty incredible. This Gambit from Sonic's working really well. You can see the hesitation for the time being of 92 Dream Team to get on in, but I think Hyena knows he can go for the plant down below on the pulse sensor. That's Neptune's trying to give information as best as he can. Hyena will fall off and he'll dive right back in. But there he goes again on this pulse sensor. He'll fall off. Nitrosol goes down, but down below, Doodle dunks on Neptune's. This is control from above. Goddess next to the line of fire as Hyena will now go back onto that diffuser with Doodle watching. Anybody who possibly pushes out could be doing so to their undoing. Tomas holding the other angle. Doodle picks up another kill, but Tomas can't pull the trigger fast enough. Diffuser goes down successfully, but but there's Goddess. She takes down two, setting Doodle up in a beautiful position in a 1v1 against Goddess. Very low on HP. They might not know that Doodle is inside a garage waiting, but the mark's on the Goddess. She might just find her way in. What a beautiful play from Doodle. 92 Dream Team out of nowhere. Doodle, oh my god. Absolutely beautiful round there from Doodle. He went from denying the pulse, C4ing from below, single-handedly, mind you, to then pushing into site in the post plant, well, rather, garage just next to site, and holding the front line against every single one of the members from the defense that were trying to retake. A very successful retake, mind you, thanks to Goddess's efforts. Beautiful play there from Doodle, salvaging that round, holding it together for the squad, and man, I just gotta, you gotta hand it to the man. Now we have a 3-1 lead in the way of 92 Dream Team. On the second map of this best of three, it seems like Dream Team are starting to run away with it. Remember earlier when I said, Parker, that as the Susquehanna Sonics, if you want to bring it back, you need to have some miracle plays, you need to have something spectacular happen in order to get that momentum in your corner following the loss they had at the beginning of this match? Well, we just saw some miracle plays, but it wasn't on the side of the Susquehanna Sonics. It was on the side of 92 Dream Team, and that is further solidifying this seeming route that we're seeing on the side of the Sonics. So, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that it's that the uh, the dice are rolling this way, but it's it's I think it's all thanks to the beautiful play by 92 Dream Team. They saw the bait, which was no garage control from Sonics. They took garage control. They s expected the C4 from below. Doodle denied that C4 from below using Maverick. Any other operator would have struggled in that situation. Thermite's going to open the whole wall, which means you have no cover. Habana, same thing similarly, at least. Um, Maverick opens up the wall. He denies the pulse while keeping himself alive. Then Doodle on the Maverick goes into the post plant. I mean, the round's over. Uh, just a beautiful play overall from uh, 92. Now we're going to be going to Jim, which is the only site that uh, Susquehanna Sonics have managed to win. And uh, already Dream Team using utility to clear out server. Man. What a match this has been so far. Yeah, really. I mean, yeah. this is... <laughs> You, uh, something, uh, something I was thinking about earlier is like, this is Challenger League? 
people say them like that. No, that's what I'm saying. Is no, I know what you're saying. This is Challenge League, and you don't expect it because, again, we've been talking about how Challenge League has just been getting progressively better over uh, the last year, I'd say. Wow! Oh, <laughs> that's, that's not supposed to be happening, Avian. Come on! John Ackerley gets caught as he rotates, and it's Drip who capitalizes on that one. A very early pick onto the Kaid. Luckily, there his gadget should be down. As it looks like you've got at least two walls that have now been Kaid with that electric claw. The wall is going to be opened up here. Now, last time, Dream Team did get this wall opened up the same way they've done it here. They did it more efficiently, though, and they didn't lose Drip like that. Neptune's a great pick there to get the refrag after Avian died, unfortunately, at the beginning of the round, at least if you're a Sonics fan. Now, not a lot of time here on the side of Dream Team. And once again, they do look a little lost. Uh, we saw this from them the last time they attacked this site. Not a lot of clarity on the actual execution into the site here for 92 Dream Team. They really struggled on knowing where every single member of the Sonics were. There was nobody really inside of construction to possibly contend with. Ghost or Neptunes who's playing in there, it's Ghost in this particular instance. You have Neptunes playing inside of the bathroom. They're just gonna press on in. Rexit has been able to just take up so much ground, but there you go, swiftly shut down by Ghost who sees him as he enters through the bathroom, or rather into the weight room. There's nobody who's going to be able to stop him at all. So you go back onto the drones if you're the Dream Team, but you don't have a lot of time to go. You've got 30 seconds, and you find yourself in a position where you just cannot crack this site for whatever reason. Will there be a difference maker this time as Doodle's going to play around the doorway, trying to see if he can find the bathroom player for the Sonics. Oh, no, he'll miss most of his shots. Gets him down. Two kills for the Dream Team as it's both Thomas and Doodle. But there's Goddess. She was a hero on this site before. She needs to be able to do it again. But, oh! The Dream Team will catch him from above. Tomas and Hyena, it's a slam dunk on that particular round, and everything seems to be falling in favor of the 92 Dream Team. Now up 4-1, to one. the final round for the Sonics on defense. Oh, boy. Okay. All right, this is already looking like a 2-0 victory for 92 Dream Team. But, hey, one boon that Sonics might have is that they won't be too exhausted when they go against Rise in the next match, if that's the way that this ends up happening. Because uh, this has been a pretty fast first match, and we're looking like a pretty fast second match as well, or rather map, I guess I should say, to, for clarity's sake. So, uh, unless Sonics has something to, to show us in, in terms of... I, I don't know, that last round... <sighs> It didn't even look like Dream Team were well coordinated on their attack. The one big difference that they had was the player inside of uh, Workshop or Construction, which you noted as uh, being lacking in the last time Dream Team tried to attack that site. Because Doodle was in Construction, he just denied so much rotation. Able to take out the Legion, who is an integral part of the actual hold from Jacuzzi. Uh, he, as you noted, or as you all saw, was able to take down Rexen when Rexen pushed into Jim, and he needed to be able to continue to do that. He was setting up to do so. Doodle saved the round there for Dream Team getting just one kill. But all that aside, it it didn't look like Dream Team should have been able to win that, and yet Sonic still lost it. So I don't know. I, they're gonna go back to Jim. They know it's their best site. Smart play from Sonic's overall, I guess, but. It definitely, I'm getting the vibe, at least so far through what we've seen, unless something dramatically changes when the Sonics go on to attack, Yeah. that right now there's this magic run. And if you know the 92 Dream Team, it's named after the US basketball team that has probably the best assembled team, possibly in professional sports. I mean, I have no idea. Of all time. And I mean, it's it's a it's a great name to really go under, given the way that they've been playing so far. Keep in mind that they were the team that only got into the playoffs because Toon Squad didn't have the better record between the two of them. And the 92 Dream Team, I think, ended up four points ahead. That's a win and a draw. That's all it really came down to. And since then, they've been world beaters. They took out Organized Chaos, a score of two to zero, and they are in a good position to possibly be able to do that as well to the Sonics, the team that everybody thought heading into. Challenger League, that they would be the undisputed best team in the entire region. That really isn't proving to be the case right now. Well, I mean, they have the biggest names, right? We talked about it, the, the pedigree on the side of Sonics. Neptunes, though. What a shot. He's been winning that fight on the balcony so much. He's going to keep doing that. He's, in fact, doing more damage to Thomas. Even exchange there, but, I mean, he got Neptunes has the kill advantage, so <laughs> really not that even. 
Thomas is going to go ahead and try and rotate now. Smart play, I think. Neptunes has just been landing his shots with that SMG on that balcony. Moving all this up, trying to find anybody that they can, but a minute and a half expired, a minute and a half to go. Looks like one of those drones, unfortunately. Well, we don't know if that's Spectator or if it's his, but it doesn't matter. Here are the attacks coming in through Jacuzzi. Wall opening up from the buck. He's being very cautious, which is actually going to cost him some skeleton key there. The, lo the further you are away, the less effective that skeleton key is at opening up walls. Well, I mean, it actually kind of depends on distance. Sometimes you get really close and it opens up smaller. Whatever. Now, the longer this timer goes down here, in this round in particular, and the way that the setup has happened from the Sonics, it, it greatly benefits them. Even if there's an even numbers advantage, or there's no numbers advantage, or there's an even number count, this is really going to benefit the Sonics. And Doodle, who has been so good, is looking for a kill of his own, but... Oh, he's going to get it. He's going to get it on the Super. Very limited HP left. How did Super lose that? That is truly impressive. Rexon knows Goddess has to be in office, sees the pre-fire, but not going to take the angle. Ooh, bad angle play there from Rexon. Seriously egregious. And Goddess will capitalize. Hyena, though, will get the refrag. Avian still inside a bathroom. Excellent place for that DMR to shine. He's going to take down Thomas. Down attacker inside a workshop, and here you go. Hyena, the last attacker. He's got a lit opponent, but Avian on full HP. It seems like it's still very winnable for the uh, Sonics. They're in good positions. Legion Trap going to hit the Thermite, and Hyena goes down. Here we go. Sonics wins another defense on Jim, the only site they've been successful on. And that'll be it for the Sonics defense as well. So they'll swap sides and we'll see, has this just been an attacker-sided affair? That's the real question that I think needs to be answered here on Clubhouse. There have been some people that have speculated that Clubhouse is slowly becoming more attacker favorite, so to speak. So I mean, the attacker-defender-sided thing just flops back and forth, back and forth, and I think it depends on the teams as well. I mean, I'm, I'm usually to me, it just kind of depends on the teams that are going into the match. I, I can never I can never lock down a map as being purely attacker defender sided. I mean statistically you can look at it and yeah, you could say, Oh yeah, it's got a sixty percent defense win rate, but honestly, again, it just it just depends. I don't know. For me it just seems like Dream Team's been a lot more dominant. They've struggled clearly with attacking Jim. Dream Team have really struggled with attacking Jim. Sonic setup on Jim has been pretty good. That last round Super delaying uh, AWD by cash for so long. Beautiful. I mean, Super won, lost a fight. He really shouldn't have lost, but he still delayed the doodle for quite a long time. The delay was very important. It allowed the rest of the defense to sure up. The real hero on that gym defense, every single round, has been Goddess. Goddess is always a thorn in the side of the Dream Team when the Dream Team is attacking through Jacuzzi Wall. And the fact that Dream Team hasn't once sent a player to just open the office drop down and maybe apply a little bit of pressure to Goddess blows my mind. But it's done now. We're on the second half. It's now Sonic's turn to attack and Dream Team's turn to set up a defense. Are we going to see a run out here from Doodle? Is that what we're about to witness? Is he... Oh, not a run out, but instead of pre-fire, and he and Avian will tussle. Neither take a single point of damage, so you get the castle to run back to safety. But Sonic's advance will probably be impeded by all of these open doors and windows. They'll need a moment or two to be able to look at everything that they can. Both Doodle and Drip are lined up in a position to greet anybody who comes through the garage doorways. You hear the Capital put the Claymore down of Super, so Doodle will likely hear that and know that, well, he's not going to bother to push it. I remember on the first map where we saw Dream Team get really passive on their defense after they lost that first round? Well, here it seems like Dream Team are trying to, well, upset the understanding that these two teams have established by being aggressive and changing things up. The runout is caught, though, by Super. Bad timing. Is there going to be a second run out? Yes, there might be, but Super's ready, and he'll get another free kill. So, okay. I think after this round, Dream Team's going to be like, yeah, yeah, maybe not on the aggression. <laughs> it is a bad idea. Things are playing out exactly the same, though, as Neptunes is able to get a kill for the Sonics, and now it's three kills in a row for them to start things off. This is a great round, and one that they really, really need. True. This is big for the Sonics. They need to be able to get their composure back, but oh no, that's Neptunes, big. that is not good. That's the second time we've seen that so far in this game. Not from him. I mean, the first time was what, who? Uh, he appears to be a little confused. It was Thomas, it, I think, the yes, first time. it was time. Tomas, yeah. yeah. So, all right. Super's in a position to possibly is get he? yet another. Tomas is going to run out. Oh no, you oh, see nice. the, you see him? You saw the crossbow! Uh, and he'll lose the fight. They're just going to throw every single thing. That's uh, the exception of Neptune's killing himself. That was a perfect round from the Sonics. They oh. really need this to be able to hang into this game. I want to say all but one of those kills 
were outside of the building. Like we, we saw a lot of of just I mean runouts from from Dream Team. I, I I don't even think a single member of the Sonics was able to get towards the site. Yeah, yeah, no one no one got on the site, that's for yeah. sure. Okay, so I seriously hope for Dream Team's sake that they just dial that back. Because remember, again, first map, map number one, border. When we saw Dream Team on defense, their first round, too aggressive, they give away picks, they lose the round. Just like what we witnessed, but slightly less uh, emphasized. After that round, Dream Team, round number two, defense, they tone it way back. They give away no picks, and the fighting starts with like a minute left in the round. We need to see, if you're a Dream Team fan, you need to see uh, Dream Team start to dial it back, play passive, deny those picks to Sonics. Because as soon as Sonics get, starts getting, you know, no picks, as soon as they can't get any, uh, you know, manpower advantage, well, they really struggle. But if you just hand them kills, they're going to take them and be like, yes, please, thank you, can I have some more? And... That's what we just saw. I mean, Super was just holding that angle. Gets two free kills. He almost got a third onto Thomas if he was holding it. It's a lot of mistakes from the uh, Dream Team, but I, again, I don't pretty, expect pretty easy for them to get capitalized upon from the Sonics. I don't, I don't expect Dream Team to, to keep making those mistakes. I expect them to adjust. Yeah. But we'll see. Maybe they, maybe they won't. Maybe they'll get even more aggressive. Yeah. It will go to a four-four, and then we'll have an actual match here. Well, we are scarily close to a direct mirror. We are actually exactly where we were on Armory. If you look at the rounds That's that true. have been won, they are all identical. The border right now, yeah. So I mean, that was a cash defense, so. Okay, uh, if we go full identical, then what we'll see is Dream Team win two rounds here, two defenses in a row. Then we'll see uh, the Sonics win one more attack, and then Dream Team will win the last round, putting us onto uh, the match point, and that'll be it. It's very similar strategies from these teams, is there's really only one defined way to be able to take this wall down with the Thatcher being banned. Doodle's gonna lose his cam immediately that it gets thrown out. And not only will his position now be yeah. alerted to the rest of the team, but he's gonna be deprived of that gadget moving forward. That's the dangerous thing. Doodle lost the camera and he didn't move. He's just gonna be trapped here now uh, that the attack is aware of his position. At most, he's gonna be able to, I, I guess, delay the attack somewhat or distract them. But, uh, yeah, his position known, he's just holding on to it. I'm curious as to why. I feel like he has potential to play C4 from below on the actual site, but he's just going to stick around here. So what you might be trying to do is, Vance coming back to the site is going to be cut off by that Claymore at the top of the main stairs. You still got no. half the round, though, to go. So lots of time if your dream team, lots of time if your doodle to be able to get back in towards the site. But it's appear for the time being, the Sonics are just going to encircle. It's a bit of a missed C4 from Drip. They're a little too early, and it's not going to catch anything on the way yeah. down. With still C4 in play here, uh, Odd does have one by Bar, but he's not in a position to use it just yet. He might be able to use it if that drop down in Workshop gets opened up or if someone stands on the drop down. Goddess is going to try and open up that Workshop wall or construction wall. Mark's coming out here onto the A island, and that's going to be a pick from Avian. This drip just kind of exposes himself. Unnecessary, certainly, as was his C4 earlier, and that's some bad play from the Bandit inside of Cash. With the cash, uh, server wall opened up, this is really difficult for Dream Team to hold on to, and this defense is looking desperate as Neptunes takes down Thomas. Odd uh, finally seemingly trying to go for a flank, but it might be too late. I don't know what you're going to have Doodle do at this point, because it's essentially a 5v2 on site. Doodle just got droned out as well, so he's going to try to rotate over towards Red Stairs. But you've got so many bodies for Sonics that there's almost no way that he's going to be able to come back. But he wins the gunfight against yeah. Neptunes. He'll continue to move on over in that direction. Hyena gets felled by Avian, who's proven to be quite strong. Rexon jumps on in, but he can't do much about it. There's Doodle with two kills. C4 goes out, won't hit anything. Goddess being able to get that plant down successfully would be a major pain for Dream Team. But Doodle's luck is going to run out. Ghost will be able to shut him down. And there you go, that mirror. It's broken for the time being, and the bad luck falls on the side of 92 Dream Team. As Sonics have now taken both attacks here on Cash. You got to imagine the Dream Teams will go somewhere else now for their third defense. Yeah, you got to expect that for sure. That cash site really not working out for the Dream Team. It's pretty obvious. That seems to be the same kind of struggle they were having when attacking onto Jim, something that is insurmountable for that 92 Dream Team. I'll be going to church here, bottom floor, for some considered to be uh, one of the best sites, for others the second best behind cash. Seemingly that was the mentality that Dream Team was going into or had going into this um, map, but. 
a little bit of a shift here. I'm expecting Basement to be a little slightly more successful <laughs> for Dream Team as the cash defense has been really, really poor on their side. Now we'll be bringing no Kayid. That's curious. No Mute either. Also curious. You can use Mute to deny the Armory uh, drop at the least. They're going to likely impact Trick. We do have a lot of impacts. Two sets, very likely, potentially even three, uh, depending on what the smoke has. But uh, lots of, uh, yep, three sets of impacts there. So that's a heavy denial on the armory drop. And they've already prepped the drop down for exactly that denial. So it's going to be Maverick likely to open up the drop down itself. Uh, I mean, yeah, Maverick can get two of these drops, and that's the impacts aren't a hard counter to that. So, I mean, if you really wanted to impact trick the, the drop down, you should have banned a Maverick instead of a Habana. But, hey, whatever. Uh, we'll see. Especially with the quantity of impacts they're bringing. They could just... Never mind. Doesn't matter. I just... I don't imagine that we're going to see Drip play on site. I, I couldn't see that. I, I have a suspicion. There you have it. Well, he's probably not going to, but there's still a lot of impacts. Rexon is up top as well, inside of the garage, so you've got two bodies that will need to be cleared out first and foremost. Exothermic Charge is going to push Drip back towards the red stairs as he just sits and waits. Rexon will fall off with the call being made that, hey, they've got control. Possibly wait for a push through garage. So it seems like the, the tricking isn't going to be the integral part of this round. It seems to be that uh, the strategy from Dream Team is to keep presence off site, and that's going to work out for them already as the Jackal, the uh, premier roam hunter, will get a pick. But Ghost fragging out as he has been through this map. Gonna get the refrag as Drip with a uh, really poor rotation there. Not checking the drop down first. It, it did look like he was checking the drop down, but probably didn't see the Zofia at didn't the same time. And then just, yeah, decided to scoot off instead. As you're a three speed, there are times when you can get away with that. It's yeah. not gonna be the case in this instance. So far, I mean, even trades here, but it's already looking way better for Dream Team as compared to the cash defenses. Uh, Sonic's struggling to get that control. And despite getting that early pick onto the alibi, it cost them. If there are any more roamers for the defense, which there are not, then it might actually be great that the Jackal is gone. But since there isn't, everyone on defense playing sight it might not really matter in the end. The smokes are going to be the real uh, disadvantage, the lack thereof, rather, for the uh, Sonics. It's the bar hatch that's gone now. And I mean, with the Maverick, you're going to use that blowtorch on at least one of those three panels. Probably even two if you can do that with ease. Imagine that Avian probably can and save the other exothermic charge for possibly the church wall. There you have Avian working away at, no, that's the bar hatch. So this, there you have it. It was the stock hatch that must have gone in that case. And there you go. Yeah, that was the one that blew up, which is Neptune's now playing in this position. He's got a frag grenade primed and ready. It'll drop down, but cooked a little too soon. There's nobody there to receive it on the other side. Ayin is actually going to be in the line of fire, but that deployable shield is going to continue to persist for the time being. He's got Ghost staring right at his direction. Three seconds to go, and you're going to have Tomas trying to anchor that down. You're the Maverick, step into a goo mine as well, with Odd just playing the doorway leading inside of church. This is going to get calamitous, though, as there's eight people still alive. Doodle takes down Neptunes, and this is a good opportunity now. As Tomas falls to Goddess, though, she's going to do her best to try and keep everything here. Hyena taking quite a bit of damage. Down goes Avian. Goddess trades that one off. She's been big. Hyena takes out Ghost, and then Goddess can't make it through the doorway, and that's finally a round for the 92 Dream Team. After it was three in a row for the Sonics. They took their last on defense, their first two on attack, but Church is where 92 Dream Team and their fans will hope that their comeback starts anew. So here's the real question now, if you're a 92 Dream Team fan, is where are they going to defend next? Cash? Well, Cash has been very unsuccessful for Dream Team so far. Jim, it's also a site that could sometimes be difficult to defend, and while it worked for Sonics, it might not work for uh, Dream Team in the same way. So it seems like we'll be going back to Cash. There's not a lot of opportunities on Cash, to be honest here, uh, from what we've been seeing from uh, Dream Team so far. Uh... Definitely a struggle. They don't have a whole lot of control, whether it be by garage or workshop. Uh, every time Dream Teams tries to uh, play aggressively on either of them, they just give away picks. It just doesn't seem to be Dream Team's sight. So we're going back here for a third time. Maybe third time's the charm, but uh, it's it's gonna things are gonna need to tra change for a lot of the plays that we've been seeing from Dream Team. For example, Drip. Playing inside of cash. Uh, 
you know, you don't need to rotate and give away a pick for no apparent reason. Especially when you know that there's someone playing your angle inside of Workshop. He was well aware. He had to have been. The tracers were coming in. So, I, I, the C4 as well. I mean, what, what's going on there? Uh, AWD, yeah, he did get a pick when he was coming up from the flank. But he's also the top fragger for Dream Team. And the only one really putting up frags here on uh, Clubhouse so far with 12 kills. He's breaking away from the rest of his team. He's been exceptional on both maps so yeah. far. And he's somebody who was a bit of a... How do we say this politely? He was the victim of Veli's 0-7 reference, I believe it was, at USN. And that was Doodle, who was not in the best form. He was having a bad day. He, he was having a bad day at the USN Finals. And he seemed to have, uh, I think, lived up to the hype that a lot of people had. And this whole team, actually, this whole dream team, team, hmm. if you could call them that, uh, the team that is Dream Team. The team that is the Dream Team. The 92 Dream Team. Their fans are very boisterous, and they've waited a long way to see the legitimacy of a lot of this core. It was all started when Execration helped assemble most of this roster, and since then it's just been uh, a really good showing for them. So, Surprised there was no capitalization on those tracers. Easy shot through the wall into the Valkyrie to get the kill, but nine... Oh, wow. <laughs> Speaking of... Yep, it's a one shot headshot through the wall. Through the wall. Yeah, beautiful shot there. And uh, odd, the top fragger for Dream Team goes down. So, okay, this is this is more of the same for Dream Team. What I was just talking about, you play off site in an attempt to have some control to deny the push from the Sonics, and you lose your top fragger in the first minute. Who was there to possibly trade off Doodle? Nobody. Who was there to possibly watch alongside him? There's nobody, nobody nearby right now, and the Sonics are able to take full advantage of that. And because of this, they now have basically full control of the west side of the building. That's going to be over towards the gym and master side. But even though Doodle is down, you still got to hope that his cameras were good enough to be able to give intel for the team. And it sure certainly seems like that's the case. This is a really dangerous play from Drip. He's trying to get an advantageous angle, but it's actually going to leave him exposed. And as he's droned out, he doesn't even see the drone, doesn't shoot it. Maverick sets up on the angle and narrowly misses the shot. The nade, though, is going to light up Drip, putting him on 25 HP. It's going to be difficult for him to trick this. In fact, he doesn't have any batteries. C4 comes out, and the wall will be opened up. So, not great play there for Drip yet again. Great execution, though, from Sonics onto the construction wall to get that control. They've also opened up the server wall once again. The rotations are cut off. This looks like a death sentence for Dream Team on this site. The only thing that's going to go in Dream Team's favor is it doesn't look like any of the info utility that exists, these Valkyrie, these Valkyrie cameras, the Maestro cameras, etc., none of them have been dealt with. Sure. So, yeah. with the team that's as good as peaking as the Dream Team are, they just need to hang on and hold on to their hats, essentially, over the next 30 seconds. Still utility available for the Sonics, which will likely come out very, very soon. But every single avenue that will lead in towards the site, for the time being, is being held by the four remaining members of Dream Team. But, there you have it. It's a death sentence indeed. Two from Sonics will take out two from Dream Team. It's a down, though, for the time being. Hyena just needs to hang on. Ten seconds left. Diffuser going down from Goddess, but oh, Hyena guns down. Neptune's looking for another. Can't find it. Successful plant going down. It's a body of Avian's been dropped, so it's essentially a 3v2. This is still very winnable for the Dream Team, but it looks to be for the Sonics. This is, oh, going to go in their favor. Goddess and Ghost are still up as Hyena and Rexon take out two. They're going to have to play from farther back. There's an ACOG on the board that could possibly go from a longer distance. It's going to be Goddess that's going to be first in line of contact. What else should be able to put together? They're going to have to bait somebody into going for the defuse, but they might not be safe at all. Waiting for her to peek. Oh, the pre-fire from Hyena doesn't connect. Ghost will finish off Rexon. We got ourselves a ball game. Tied up. Five apiece. Uh, looked like it was going bad for Sonics in quite a hurry, but they managed to recover at the very final second, avoiding that nosedive. And, well, we're going to need all 12 rounds to settle this. Maybe our first overtime of the day. If I was to give a piece of advice to Dream Team right now, it would be don't go back to Cash. Try to juggle it between Jim and, heck, maybe Bar, because Cash is really not working out for Dream Team right now. They have... I just they're they're everything they everything Dream Team does on Cash is being really well countered by Sonics. There was a bit of luck in that last round with the kill onto Odd through the wall. You gotta be honest, that was not just pure skill on the side of Neptunes, though good on him for going for the shot. You miss all the ones you don't take. But at the same time, overall, Cash is not working for Dream Team. I really hope that they don't they're gonna go back to Cash. So we're going to Cash. Fourth times the charm here screams Dream Team at the top of their lungs. It might be getting to the point that uh, it's uh, near hysteria because it's really not working. Hopefully, for their sake, for their fans' sake, it does here. We'll see.
They've adjusted off a of bandit. And they're bringing a uh, Kayid on drip. So the Kayid useful, I suppose, if you're trying to hold on to one of these two walls between workshop and server. Uh, Sonics has been consistently opening both of those walls every single round, despite no Thatcher being in play. That's what we talked about with the Maverick being a good substitute for the Thatcher. It feels like I'm watching someone you know, like, <laughs> doing their... bashing their head against something. I was like, oh, it's gonna work! I'll be this time. Yeah. There's that one pain gaming matchup that I'll never forget. The, cat, the IQ? It's, it was, no, it was on Bank, and it was when they were defending the CCTV downstairs. Lockers. Oh, and they... they Defended it four times. And then they just brought, like, four or five C4. Yeah, that was the very first time they just started bringing more and more C4. And I think it worked, but... Eventually, the C4 did work out. Torch. That's a cool little thing, can you gonna be hard to get that with a blowtorch. Yeah. Harder, I guess. I mean, you still have the opportunity to basically tear away at the entire metal wall, and I... You can I mean, also, you could still get it. It's just yeah. a little bit lower. Very difficult for a Kaid to be successful on this wall if there's a Maverick in play, in, in any way, because you can just cut off the metal and then buck through it, or sledge through it, or ash through it, or Zofia through it, etc. It's difficult, period. There's so many different ways. Now, it here's the big thing. The focus that we saw on the last time the cash was defended, it was Doodle playing aggressively all in his lonesome, and he got punished for it. Now, if you're playing as Dream Team, with how close that round came in what was essentially a 2v4, if you keep a couple bodies alive, you can hold enough map control around here, maybe put one person below, and you're in a good enough position that you can just wait and hope that Sonics don't have enough utility to get to you in the meantime. There's not a lot of teams that when they're defending Cash and CCTV roam that far outside of the garage. The garage is usually as far as they get maybe somebody down. If you count down. it as roaming. If you do, yeah. It's just an extension of the site a lot of ways, especially if you break open the wall. So for the time being, it doesn't look like you have that many bodies off site. You have Doodle down below, but everybody else from Dream Team is just going to sit and wait. Drip or Yardy has taken a little bit of HP. Oh, what a call! As you can clearly hear that Doodle gets the information from his teammate, and down goes Neptunes and the frag grenades from Sonics. Sledge has been opening up that office wall every single round, and the call came out there from probably Drip that it was happening. It's like, hey, pre-place the C4. They open office wall before they clear construction. C4 down, and it gets a kill. Sledge gone is going to be huge. Two nades eliminated, and look at the time. And look at Drip, he's slowly bleeding out on his HP, but he's still existing for the time being. You've got both of your smokes here from Super, so no damage from those spreading asphyxiating bolts. Rex will take out Goddess, trade it off immediately, as it looks like Sonics are gonna go for Broke to try and get on in. Avian making everybody pay in his path. He now goes for the plant as well, he's doing everything on his own, and it doesn't appear that it's been spotted out. Super and Ghost are there, and now it's all up to Doodle, and everything's fallen to pieces for Dream Team. Diffuser goes down successfully, and Sonics appear to be able to take the lead. It all comes down to what Doodle is able to accomplish. He's going to have multiple people looking in his direction. He doesn't really have any information. You know there's one on Repel to your right. He looks the wrong way. And it's going to be super to finish him off. Sonics will move themselves to match point. Our prevailing theory that maybe Clubhouse just happens to be more attacker favored between these two teams appears to be coming true. And Sonics will take their very first lead of the game. I mean, say that, but I, what I see is I'm looking at this, I'm looking at my, my notes here, and I'm saying, okay, cash, cash, basement, cash, cash. Maybe mm -hmm. Dream Team doesn't know how to defend cash. Also, Sonics is really good at attacking it. We've been seeing some excellent assaults every single round from Sonics. What do they do? They open up the server wall, they put someone on repel, cuts off rotation, then they just go for a push into sight in that round. They didn't feel the need to go for workshop because they were getting those picks. They had the smokes and utility to cut off the, the uh, lines of sight, and they were confident that Dream Team were going to expect a rotation to workshop at that point. Dream Team was caught off guard by the aggression, walking into sight, Avian getting those entry frags, absolutely massive, going for the plant too. Avian had a stellar round there. But the more, the, I think the big takeaway here is that Dream Team needs to s go to gym. I know they couldn't attack it, but man, it cannot be worse than that. They're gonna go to basement here as it's finally opened up. And if we see more of the same on um, what we saw the last time that the basement was defended by uh, Dream Team, we should go to 6-6 right here. And that'll be, uh, well, there you go. 
So, I mean, if that does happen, I guess we'll find out what happens in, uh, in OT. Here's the thing with overtime. In a best of three setting, you now pick your sides for overtime. Mm -hmm. So 92 Dream Team did not pick this map, but they picked their sides, which means that the Sonics picked their sides for overtime, and the Sonics opted to go to defense yeah. twice. Yikes. Which means that you have the 92 Dream Team attacking twice. And so far, there have been three successful defense victories against eight to the attackers. You obviously want to be the team that's going to be able to attack twice. Which means that if Dream Team wins here, which if the record holds, they should win here. We'll go to 6-6, six, six, we'll go to overtime, and then we'll see the Sonics go to gym defense, which they should be capable of winning. Then Dream Team will go to basement defense, which if they you know get to that point, then they'll have won every single time they've gone there. And then we'll go to the final round, but the Sonics won't get to defend the only site that they've really had success on gym because they already defended it and that should be a really long victory for dream team but a victory nonetheless if the record holds but that is not something you can rely on no that's all speculation of course because before that the dream team has a task that has begun to get more daunting the longer this match has gone on which has beat the sonics this uh -huh. is the very first this is the very first lead that sonics have had period in this entire series so it's Coming at the perfect time, really, when you think about it. Yeah. And they need it to be able to push us to consulate for our third map. But until then, well, you're gonna need to see what happens with this particular round. You've got Neptune's upstairs inside a kitchen. You've got Avian on the main floor as well with Super doing drone work. And that's one of the hatches that will be gone, the bar hatch. The stock hatch was Kaeden. It didn't look like there was any real presence from the Sonics to try and take that hatch down. This is really good information from this drone that Neptune's has deep inside of Armory or Arsenal as some call it. And uh, that presence of information is going to allow Sonics to better coordinate their attack, whether they hit Armory or otherwise. They know what they don't need to deal with, and that's a player deep Armory. Or if they do need to deal with it, they'll know that too. Nate's coming out here to try and clear the barbed wire. It will be successful. You can get some lesion traps to boot. Gas canister's a little bit early here from the smoke, but coming down the last 35 seconds, and he's only got one left, so slightly ahead of schedule for the gas canisters, but better safe than sorry is seemingly the mantra here for Dream Team as they're getting close to being pushed into map number three. Everybody's still alive. That is the most painfully obvious thing, as Rexon is now under a lot of trouble. Avian has come alive in his own way through the second half, and they're gonna rely on him. The Sonics here to be able to do good work. The legs of the bunker spotted, but Thomas will miss a second from Avian, as now Doodle falls. The Sonics looking to put this one away. There's Ghost, and Thomas is gonna go down too. It's all up to Drip. What is he gonna be able to do? He can't stop Goddess, but Super shuts him down. The Sonics take the map. We need a third map between these two teams, because of course we do. The Sonics, when they needed it the most, they show up big and they dominate the second half. They give 92 Dream Team one round on defense, and we're gonna need Consulate to sort this one out between these two teams. So, Avian, the real star of the show there for me in that second half, as you stated in the middle of that round, it was really him coming alive, uh, getting a lot of those entry picks in uh, the first or the last two rounds specifically. Uh, the last cash defense, it almost seemed like 92 was going to be able to finally make it happen on cash. And then Avian. And then on the basement, I mean, basement should be a defense win for 92, given their past record. But Avian getting picks in blue, following that up with some substantial pressure into Church and Armory, simultaneously getting those picks as well. I mean, great job to the bird and uh, well-deserved victory there for Sonics, bringing it back. So. I'm personally happy that we don't have a complete sweep like we were seeing or expecting out of the first half of Clubhouse. It was a 4-2. It just looked like Sonics had just weren't there anymore. Suddenly, we, sh we switch over to the second half, and I mean, 92 Dream Team can't get a word in edgewise. I wonder how much of this stems from the very first defense. The very first defensive round that we saw for 92 Dream Team was when three of them ran outside at various points in the map to try and take out somebody from Sonics. True. I understand that you find yourself in a position where you're up 4-2. You think to yourself, we just won the first map. We're probably going to win this one now, too, boys. Let's go get it. You know, uh, it is quite literally the difference maker between a pro league team and a challenger league team sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes pro league teams will do that as well. And we've been critical of that in the past where a team goes with an unorthodox site or they go with a very aggressive strat to try to catch somebody off guard and they end up blowing their own momentum essentially. And if you look at the way that these teams play when they play seriously, 
and they play tighter. Well, a lot of these rounds still went for the Sonics, but the 92 Dream Team looked better in a number of those rounds. So that's speculation as to what's going to happen in consulate. Well, you're going to need to take a little bit of a break because the boys need a break in order to go to the bathroom and do the things that you need to do. Go grab some drinks, go stretch your legs, etc. We'll see you in a couple minutes to uh, end this exciting matchup between these two teams. Too dreamed. Is there, but I think Ghost understands that there's going to be.
It's a good thing it wasn't a sweep because we've been treated to two really exciting matches so far. Maps, and we are going barreling into our third one here on Consulate. My name's Intero. I'm joined by Kickstar, and hopefully you've been enjoying the banger of the two maps that we've had up till this point. Yeah, uh, Border, a pretty decisive victory despite going 7-4. I'd say pretty decisive victory for an ID2 Dream Team. They deserved that win. They got that win. Uh, Sonics on Clubhouse, an amazing comeback in the second half, dropping one round in that second half. Their attacks, excellent. But mm, 92 Dream Team continuously going to Cash, which just did not aid them in the slightest. Four times to Cash, four times lost by 92 Dream Team. And Sonic saying, yes, please, thank you. May I have some more? They got it. They got the win. Now we're going to map number three, as stated by Parker, Consulate. Now, Consulate was a map that was played yesterday by the Sonics. They prevailed 7-4 over top of Disrupt. So, once again, just like we saw on Clubhouse and Border, all three of these maps were played by the Sonics on Friday, and now they are also being played today in the match that determined whether the Sonics would be here playing 92 Dream Team or whether it would be Disrupt Gaming. Now, because of the fact that the Sonics lost Clubhouse and it was a pretty tight matchup against Disrupt, but actually inverted that score line to win it against the 92 Dream Team. What happens on console? Well, it's a map that they're clearly good enough to be able to take out Disrupt on it. Disrupt were a team that looked to be a little bit better than the Dream Team so far, but I mean, this is the first map the Dream Team has dropped in the postseason for Challenger League. I mean, a lot of people had Disrupt and uh, the Sonics being the two teams in North American Challenger League that are really going for it. Um, and while well, they met each other in the in the semis, so in the in the playoffs, so there's couldn't be both of them. So um, Sonics managing to inch out in that two one victory over uh, Disrupt in the best of three. That's why they're here today. So I, I don't know this this last one. It could go either way. From what we've been seeing, that comeback from Sonics. This okay. If, if we base Consulate on what we saw in just you know a fourth of the rounds total for this match, which was the second half of that second map. And there's no way that 92 is going to be able to win this map. If Dream Team... Oh, oh yeah, by the way, look at it. There's a little thing, the little infographic for the last map. Cool. Little, more more, uh, more wins based on kills. Uh, no successful diffuses again. There's two diffusers down. That's neat. Nobody ran out of time. Yeah, as, as I was saying, those last, uh, just a fourth of the rounds we've had, the, the second half of the second map, if we see that again from Sonics, then I think there's no way that Dream Team can, can win this uh, third map. Yeah. It really comes down to also your perseverance, right? There's a team, uh, th there's a belief that the more you play together as a team, the more that you get experience at the higher levels, the better you're going to do throughout your career. I mean, and, and if you look at Sonics, this is a team where every single member on that team has gone to Pro League on separate occasions. Some of them being there for quite a while. Many, many returning, you know, what would you call them? Like, I guess like season finalists. Oh, geez. OGs, the original gangsters, if I mean, you want to call them that. I mean, the the all the players on Sonics are veterans, I guess. Former pros. Uh, they've been they've been around for so long, lots of experience, and the you were saying it the perseverance on the side of Sonics, it just has to be stronger. It really does, and I I think what we were talking about earlier. Remember the when we went to the second half of Clubhouse and we saw that aggression from uh, the defense on the side of 92 Dream Team, we were talking about has like, that kind of decision-making process is sometimes quite literally what separates Challenger League and Pro League because it could, you know, have cost Dream Team quite a lot. The fact that just like, hey, we just want to push out and we're just going to keep doing it. Three people through the same door, every single one of them gets picked because Sonics is waiting for it. I, I don't know. I just, I feel like that's, that's the sort of mistakes that 92 can't be making. They certainly did. Um, and then they, they kept going to the same site. I mean, that's what really stands out to me more than anything. Same site. That when you get more comfortable as a team and you play more as a roster, without roster changes, with all that experience under your belt, not only does your map pool grow, your ability to play different operators grow, grows, you'll have more roles, and then your strategies on each individual site will also grow. Well, yep. if you look at that previous matchup, Give 92 Dream Team win one lone defense. It was on Church. That's the site that for the longest while had the highest win rate for the defenders. So it stands to reason that they would win that site. But they never went to gym. They never went to bar on that main floor, of course. And then every time they went to cash, they lost. That really shows to a lack of depth that they have in their strats to be able to 
just outmaneuver their opponents and be prepared. Certainly agree with you there, Parker. And now, <laughs> I, I don't know if you heard it, but I said a little bit, a little of course there when the Nomad got banned. Dream Team banning Nomad on Consulate. I wonder what that's going to suggest. <laughs> It's already a map where people love jumping out of windows, people love watching the doorways, etc. And, well, no Nomad in play on this map in particular. Not really much of a surprise. All the bands here from Dream Team really line up with what you would expect from them. They're going to want to try and win fights. doesn't matter where the fight is. Taking the mirror off the table is going to assist them in clearing out the roamers. Taking the nomad off the table is going to assist Dream Team in any runouts. But just in general, the kind of mentality there seems to be, we want to win fights. We don't want things that are going to impede that. So, pretty pretty basic, I'd say, from uh, from Dream Team and sensible bands there. Uh, or rather, from uh, Sonics, uh, pardon me. Uh, Dream Team... On the other hand, I don't, I, was I saying Dream Team that whole time? I think I was. Dream Team, on the other hand, going to be banning out uh, Thermite, and they're going to be banning out the Pulse. So they can use the vertical, or they're not going to be able to, they're not going to have to contest with AWD's vertical play, which we saw being so powerful on border. Um, remember his Pulse from below being something that uh, Sonic's continuously struggled with. Uh, is that a full reinforce? And bathroom uh, we want to go up and possibly look it's it seems one wall one wall to zulu so it's that is it's called depending on where you are yeah yeah in the world or z if you're not uh or z if you say it properly okay i'm just not gonna i'm just not gonna take that fight i say melee so i'll let you have zed <laughs> Which is, you know, it's funny because they, they're like... Is it melee? Don't you say melee? I'm pretty sure you say melee. I say melee. Okay. It's, it's just pronunciation as far as like... I got, I got it. Yeah. So well, that bathroom... I just thought two E's makes the sound E. Bathroom that you were talking about. There's, they still have the rotate that they could possibly utilize out to Zulu, as a lot of teams call it, which is that Z or Z-shaped mm -hmm. hallway. Yeah, by the, with the benches. By the benches, yes. It used to be called benches. A lot of teams call it Zulu now. Yeah, everyone calls it Zulu. Yeah. It's easier. We're seeing uh, emphasis placed on top four control, beginning with admin office, uh, office, and they're going to open up rotation Visa Vista stairs. I don't know why I can't words today. Neptune's using those breaching charges to great effect there, and here we go. The excellent droning again from Sonics. We were talking about this in map number one. Sonics' information gathering is spectacular. Their cap capitalization based on the information they gather isn't amazing, but Sonic also always knows what they're dealing with. That's, it's very impressive. Well done. And use the uh, IQ gadget. You can do what he's trying to do. He just hasn't managed to make it work yet. It's like a lot of teams, you take control of admin and then you move from there. But there hasn't been a lot of movement on Sonic. So it's quite a bit of hesitation for the time being as to where they want to go. Maybe just a bit of deliverance or deliberation rather. No, they are close to knocking at the door. It's just uh, it's seemingly um, just focus on top four control here from uh, the attack. Thermite not being here means Sabana's gonna have to play a huge role. Two early picks from uh, Sonics. I mean, they're still presence inside a bathroom. It's surprising that uh, the Jaeger of Rexon has not really actually done anything with that presence. He's actually just gonna fall back. I'm not sure if that was the right call, but maybe C4 from below gonna be missing. Not a whole lot of bite back here from Dream Team right now, and Neptune's going to make this a two versus five. Uh, IQ sees another opponent, and okay, he's going to make it a one versus five. Can we see an amazing clutch from Hyena? No, it's a perfect round. Okay, great attack there from <laughs> Sonics. They got top floor control, they turned that into middle floor control, and they turned that into heavy vertical pressure and a round one. Not bad. And, and, this is the question that's going to be answered, and I think we can have a better grasp on it in a, probably a round or two, is mm -hmm. how much of Border was just 92 Dream Team put all their eggs in one basket. They were really, really good at it. And then the Clubhouse, they were good at attack on Clubhouse too, don't get me wrong. But obviously, their defense, not as strong. As it was on Border, for example, they still took three of the five rounds that were played on Border against the Sonics. 
But Sonic showed against Disrupt yesterday, that or, or against Friday rather. It it really does feel like yesterday. All these days tend to blend together. Yeah. It on, on their matchup on on Friday against Disrupt that they're are problems that the Sonics have that can be exploited in the way that they play on border. And it was 92 Dream Team who were capable of doing that better than Disrupt was. I think the real uh, crippling blow here for Dream Team is gonna be the fact that they're starting on defense right now where they clearly favor attack. Dream Team's attacks, whether they're well rehearsed or not, because you were touching on and you were absolutely right, border, way better practice by Dream Team. It was clear, it was is super obvious that Dream Team was ready for Border. They weren't so ready for Clubhouse. But one thing that was consistent through both of them is the attacks from Dream Team were better. Sonics is starting on attack, which is going to, I think, limit the potential uh, potential for momentum here for Dream Team, and it's going to force them into the position that Sonics was in on the last map, which is you have to come back in the second half. That's what I'm foreseeing here, and we don't know if Dream Team really has that capacity because it was the, I think, the tenacity that is built on experience that Sonics has over long story careers in, in Siege that allowed Sonics to come back in that second half on the, in the second map. I don't know if Dream Team's capable of that, but it, we're not there yet. We're only one round in here, so it's not, it's not necessarily over, but one thing really stands out to me, uh, yet again, we are going back to the same site that Dream Team just lost. Luckily this time, there is adjustment from Dream Team. They will be roaming on the top floor, so at least there's that. The Pulse taken out, and then there was the Valkyrie taken out on Border as well. It really goes to show, I think, not necessarily the respect, but more of the worry that the Sonics have about putting Doodle on those information rolls and his ability to frag accordingly. And now you've got the Valkyrie in the hands of Drip, so there's still going to be information there for the Dream Team. This is going to be a trade as good as it's going to get. Drip is there to get Doodles back as Ghost Falls, but both teams lose something, and now Drip gets felled as well. The Sonics making this very methodical, as they've got almost every rotate covered for the time being, and they're in perfect position to be able to greet every member of Dream Team as they try to get back to the site, or just simply occupy as much map control as they can. And now see, this is second half of Clubhouse Sonics right here. They are executing these attacks attacks very well, holding down the necessary angles and getting the picks that they need in order to get these rounds. I'm going to try and open up the garage now, but here's the, here's the really deceptive thing. We're, we're only halfway through the round just now, and it feels like it's already been an entire round. It feels like we, we every, so many picks have been given away. It's really good that Dream Team have managed to get one in response onto Ghost, uh, but at the same time, they lost both their roamers for that one uh, Zofia. And they're not going to be able to contest the garage either. That's been opened up by the Havana. Again, Thermite being banned is going to make the garage less relevant, but still a very important part of any attack onto the basement. The big thing, too, is that while Zofia is a really important operator, you've also taken yourself out of the fight in terms of your only C4 on the board with Drip, and now you're going to lose another piece of plant denial. And the smoke as Tomas gets spotted and taken out. And as good as Tomas is as a player, as an operator, Smoke is particularly useful at being able to deny this plant. Super's gonna go fishing, he's gonna catch Hyena, and now it's all up to Rexon, playing from above. He's gonna need to drop down and do his best Assassin's Creed impression, but he's not even gonna be able to make it out of the bathroom. He gets into the antechamber, as it's called, and the Neptunes to quickly end him. That's two in a row now for the Sonics, and they do not look like they're slowing down at any time soon. Not only is that two in a row, but if I'm not mistaken, this one kill for uh, Dream Team, as it was a perfect round in the first. Could be wrong about that, but I, I, whatever the case, it it really doesn't look like Dream Team are actually present in these rounds. So uh, they're going to change. All right, so they won't be making the same exact mistake they made in the last map of going to the same site over and over and over again. They're going to try something, something different uh, in... Uh, Dream Team's defense, though, it is a lot easier to play other sites on this map. This is notoriously one of the most, uh, I'd say ver versatile, is that the right word? In terms of sites, Consulate, you can defend pretty much anything. The newer site is hard, I, harder to defend, I guess. Not many teams go there. But the three basic sites on Consulate, yeah, you can go, you can go to any of them. And I was right. Drip, the only one with a kill, over two rounds. It's tough. Yep. It's tough when a team that is known for its fragging capabilities, that's just not fragging. You know that on Consulate, most lineups, very similar to Coastline, will be extremely utility and gadget heavy. Capitao, Jackal, Dokabi, Zofia, one hard destructor at minimum, possibly your, you know, your gadget denial, your Twitch, your Thatcher, etc. 
Obviously, notwithstanding the bands that are going to be on the board, in this case, it's going to be a Thermite and Nomad. But you look at the lineup that's being brought. The Sonics don't have a lot of deviation in the operators that they bring. They bring a Zofia, a Capitao, an IQ, a Thatcher, pretty much every single round we found. And they make it work. They can apply it because this, those operators have tools that can use almost be used in almost every circumstance. They work extremely well on Consulate, especially when you see Capitao, who is quite strong in his current incarnation with the gadget that he has, especially with that scope change, the M249. He can be a particular menace when you look at the way that you can execute on any of the sites on this map. And while losing Ghost, like we said in the previous round, was obviously a major blow to them, there's still so much utility left from the Sonic side that it's not the end of the world if that's the first operator that goes down. So, Yeah, this, this iteration of Capitao is kind of ridiculous in how much control he can establish. He's got this LMG, which is very powerful with this nice optic that's very clean. And you're seeing the LMG being brought. You're seeing the firebolts used to great effect. I mean, it's really not... There's not really much else to say. He's a very powerful operator, especially the fact that he, you know, bypasses those uh, ADSs. But that's all said and done now. Uh, seeing control top four again being the focus for the Sonics. They've already established control of admin office. Are they shifting to a B take now? A little bit of... Uh, Interesting. It, it's stacked up inside of admin, and now they've completely fallen off. They obviously didn't like something about it. They might have identified that there was some serious holes in this defense from the Dream Team. And maybe they're trying to seize upon that opportunity that is often presented by their opponents. Uh, we've seen that Sonics is good at that. That is something that they are they really do excel at, is finding the, finding the hole in your defense, and, well, taking control. AWD with a run out there from below. It's the main lobby, and there goes Ghost. Neptunes was very aware of the fact that there was likely going to be a run out, but he thought it would be from Piano, as yet there's another body who falls from Sonics as it's Drip this time. Who's tagged on in? Despite all of this and another kill from Doodle coming out, you still have opportunities for Neptunes to possibly get a plant down. But there goes Goddess. Once again, another from Doodle. He's going to be denied an ace just simply because Drip had got one earlier on, but Neptune's getting the kill onto Tomas will give off Neptune's position inside a projector. He sees the head of Rexon and he'll take it away from him, subtracting it from the rest of his body. 30 seconds to go. Neptune's will need to find the remaining three members of the Dream Team. He holds that diffuser, but this is good patience from the Dream Team. He knows there's a body somewhere nearby, doesn't know it's inside a spiral. As he'll look around the corner, and it's the SMG 12 with that high rate of fire. They'll gun through Neptunes, take him out of the action, and that will be the first round on the board for 92 Dream Team. So, great round there from Dream Team. The runout's really the star of the show, <sighs> and that's why they ban Nomad, which is what we were talking about at the beginning of the match. Um, now, the flanks not being held down was definitely a distraction as well for Sonics. You could see that they were trying to go for Repel, but also, Sonics were spending a whole lot of time on shoring up those runouts for the windows or the front door or what have you. And it didn't work in the end. That's the really sad part is uh, they, Sonics invested time. They invested manpower. They invested uh, utility in the Claymores. And yet Dream Team still managed to run out successfully and remove a lot of the pressure that uh, Sonics was applying to the outside of the building. The curious thing for me is... is I mean, the question that keeps popping into my mind, I should say, is is why didn't Sonics just keep on keeping on with the admin office attack? Like, uh, it, what's with the rotation there? You put one pe person on balcony, if he gets picked off, not, I mean, you still have manpower in sight. You don't have to worry about runouts. There's obviously something they just didn't like about it. Yeah. They must have run it a certain way. And I mean, look at what Neptunes did. He vaulted in the window and started to plant while the rest of his team was dying. And I think that the call that was made from Sonics was, hey, this is free. The only thing that's really standing in our way for the time being is Smoke playing inside a connector. If we can distract him, possibly from bathroom or even from main stairs, possibly from console office windows, Neptunes can hop right in and plant. And there's nothing to impede him. Unfortunately, the reason why the site was free was because Dream Team had a couple bodies playing off-site who went for runouts and got two very important kills, which completely knocked Sonics on their heels. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you've got a IQ playing downstairs. They'll be detecting, or rather not downstairs, but main floor. They'll be detecting the evil eye just inside of the site. I do like that uh, Dream Team are 
not going for a uh, defense of the bottom floor again. They're not repeating the mistakes they made on Clubhouse. I'm gonna try middle floor, see if that works out for them. The fact that IQ is still in play is going to seriously impede the, the Valkyrie playing in this round. Already one cam dealt with. Rexen waiting for a repel from the roof with a pre-opened window, or a prep window as many would say. It's just slow going here. It seems like Sonics is really worried about runouts again. <laughs> and that's as we touch upon, and we will probably touch upon many times why that Nomad ban is so important, and it's also part and parcel of the way that a lot of teams play console. Yep. You have to guard against multiple windows, you have to guard against the doorway, especially when the site is upstairs. So in this case, you got the main lobby in which a lot of teams will defend very similarly to that console office up top that we just saw get played. You're going to have multiple people possibly roaming around. One good example is currently Drip, who's making his home on the spiral stairs and heading on up top. Doesn't know if there's been any control that's been taken inside a projector. He's got Doodle and Rexon not too far off, but they're on the other side of the building over on the west by that console office door. Once again, it looks like the Sonics might be rotating. One of the bodies of Dream Team has been spotted on drone, and that might prompt somebody from Sonics to go and possibly finish them off. Projector control would be really hard for Sonics right now. There's three different Dream Team players playing angles on the projector, waiting for the push on the top floor. The Valkyrie, the Doc, and the Jaeger. The first one, Valkyrie, Drip, going to take down Super, and that's the first kill as we hit the last minute. He'll get a second kill, just pushing into Soda Machine. Easy frags here for Drip, and the round seems like a complete lockout. Sonic suddenly has fallen asleep when attacking anything other than the basement, it seems, on this map. Um, their in-building presence is lacking, and what is there is insufficient to deal with just a roaming Valkyrie, which is not good. The one plus that they have is that Goddess still holds that diffuser. They won't have to waste any time to possibly go get it. She'll walk right on inch, takes out Doodle. Gonna go for the plan inside of a default spot as Avian takes out Rexon, but they trade each other off. Goddess gets finished off, but Ghost catching one from behind. He's got two more bodies, 10 seconds in the diffuser to grab in order to make this work. But he's not gonna get through the doorway. One to the chest from Tomas will shut down the Sonics. And oh boy, boy, it's not gonna be Consulate that's gonna be any different than our previous two matches. These maps are going to go the distance no matter what. Extremely close, and we're going to be tied up through four rounds. Every time we're seeing the same thing here from Sonics, if they're not attacking the basement, that is. And that is that Sonics is taking control of admin office and then nothing else inside. They, tra they take control of admin office and then they fall off. They're like, nah. We're going to go outside now. And then Sonic starts getting punished, not only in terms of frags, but also in terms of time. Sonic is losing out on so much time in those rotations. Consulate is not an easy map to rotate on continuously. It, it does it does cost quite a lot. And uh, Dream Team are taking full advantage. They've been given free reign to just rotate. I mean, that Valkyrie was not originally playing on top of Spiral. She rotated into that. And the fact that nobody caught that rotation from Dream Team, I mean, we're, or rather, from Sonics, was, was a little bit disheartening. And then following that, Two players cleaning the roamers upstairs, or at least, not, well, trying to, I suppose. Uh, and then a Valkyrie just walks into both and wins the fight. That's uh, Drip. Great round there from Drip. Um, we're going to go back to the basement here because the only other option is the new site, and many teams just don't like it. Seems that Dream Team is in that pool. This could be another opportunity for Sonics to gain the lead as they have let yet to lose an attack onto the bottom floor. One thing that I'm really curious about is what is Dream Team going to do to contest upstairs? Because I feel like Sonics has been losing the rounds on middle floor and top floor defense when they have to go outside. But you don't necessarily have to go outside to clear the roamers here. And I think that that focus from Sonics might be enough for them to win another round. No, oh, the. One of the biggest comments that we've been paying to the Sonics has been on their drone work and how yeah. they've been able to give each other the information to be able to get the opening picks onto Dream Team through this map. Not necessarily the full three maps, but this map in particular. It's fallen off for the last two rounds, and it's been a field day for both Drip and Doodle to be able to capitalize off of that, pick somebody off from Sonics right after they've gotten into the building and really derail the momentum that you've seen Sonics building up through those first two rounds and through much of the latter half of Clubhouse as well. The real question to me is, 
Well, is that site specific? This is a question that we always will ask time and time again. How much of this is just simply a team not feeling comfortable on a site, like the cash defense from 92 Dream Team on Clubhouse, versus maybe the Sonics just don't have the best wherewithal to be able to attack these other two sites outside of Garage on Consulate. Well, it doesn't really matter because if you're the Sonics and you don't have an opening death within the first minute to minute and a half, which is what we're about to get to, then I'd say that's a success against the way that the Dream Team has been playing recently. Well, top floor control, but uh, no picks to show for it. And with the time that's being spent here from Sonics, they're going to have limited time to actually use this top floor control to establish vertical pressure onto the site itself. That's the tricky thing. Because Sonics has been winning all of their attacks on the basement because of how much time they've been allotted to just open up the piano floor and start picking off defenders. Oh, there's still players in piano. That's going to be AWD, who doesn't take any damage from that spray from Zofia, just getting marked constantly, but still somehow persisting. Eating a lot of time off the clock, and you can't really get control of Piano and Doodles there, but there you go, Avian will catch him. It was a three-man <laughs> endeavor with Neptune's Ghost and Avian all in hot pursuit. They'll be able to tag Doodle and then finish him off. That's what you need to be able to do, and now you've gotten control of Piano, but I don't believe the garage door has been opened up just yet. That's nope. a significant problem. In fact, it doesn't look like it's going to be much of a push at all. Goddess is not really in a position to be able to open it up. She's positioned outside, but they're just going to go through yellow stairs, and Rexon, who was on the roam as well, will now come alive, and he'll take down Neptunes with 30 seconds left on the clock. He's got information at hand inside a piano, with Goddess moving back over to Garage. They should be able to open it up or not, but no! Super takes out Rexon. He's close to being inside of the site. Marked on Cam, with the rest of his team assembled over towards the yellow stairs. He'll take out Tomas. Two big kills for Super. There's Drip taking out Goddess, and now Drip looks for another, pulls out the Deagle, and it's just a flurry from Dream Team. Super will need to get them all. Oh, he takes down Hyena, but he's got two seconds left. Drip just needs to hide on Mark. There'll be a clock striking midnight on that particular round for Sonics, and what has been a kill deciding every single round, well, it'll be the time doing it this time around. And they have the Dream Team taking their very first lead of this matchup three rounds in a row. I was also, I think, the first round we've seen time be the end to any of these teams. So good job there to the Al Valkyrie there surviving. It was Drip, I believe, and he had a pretty spectacular round. He's also been having a really good match overall. He did also, uh, you could safely say, win that defense on the top floor, or rather, no, it was the middle floor where he just pushed into Soda and managed to get that double kill. And Drip's been coming alive here in the first half of this third map. Pretty crazy that you had Super, who was all off on his own. He wasn't really even connected to the rest of that team's push. And whether it was by design or just by sheer luck, Super was able to take advantage of the fact that almost every single member of Dream Team was looking for Super's teammates and not Super himself. That's where he was able to pick up two kills quite easily, picked up a third as the rest of his team fell around him. And it really showed you that the focus from Dream Team was over towards the yellow stairs. That's where they were looking. That's where they were anticipating most people coming from. But Super was camped out at the bottom of Visa, Visa stairs, it, just waiting to possibly strike. I mean, it was a really good opportunity for Super. He came very close, but it was the inefficiency of the roam clear, the beginning of the map, or rather round, that ended up costing him because, you know, time. I do feel that Super could have easily won that last engagement, especially considering the Valkyrie did not have an MPX, rather was stuck on the Deagle. That Deagle is high risk, high reward. In that situation, I would have said the risk is going to win out, but the gunfight never happened, so it didn't matter. Rexen going for the, well, high risk, high reward, speaking of, and he will do some damage there to the Zofia. Good job to, uh, well, put some pressure on the attackers. And he gets away unpunished, so that's really, uh, again, that's on the Sonics there. The 92 Dream Team has emerged with a 4-2 lead through maps 1 and map 2, and they are now poised to be able to possibly do it again, yep. depending on what happens here on the console office site upstairs. Now, this was the site in which the ball started to get rolling for Dream Team. They have not lost a round since then. And Rexon is well aware of his position, and he's not going to get out of there alive. It's Ghost and Neptunes to be able to dispatch him. And a very good entry from the Susquehanna Sonics up top. Taking complete control of admin, they can continue to push on in. That's good control to have. It has been the focus for the uh, Sonics for this whole map. 
now that they've established that control, they're going to start moving outside, and this is the dangerous part. The thing, though, is uh, that Rexen has been picked off. That's one of those likely uh, roamers just dealt with, and the runout potential is less for Dream Team because of that, though it's not completely gone. It's going to be some uh, focus push on to, or rather put on to Projector here by the Sonics as they start trying to open up that wall. Ghost being lit up is going to be possibly a saving grace here for Dream Team. They did lose Jaeger for nothing, but he did do damage, and there's that. As the push starts coming out, there really isn't anyone that Sonics can get in terms of picks here on A. It's an off-site play here for Dream Team going for possibly retake. Keep in mind, it was the Sonics who got caught as they were trying to get in towards the site last time by double runouts from both Doodle as well as Drip. So like there's going to be the case here. There's nobody really poised to strike on behalf of this Dream Team. So you're really just going to rely on the Sonics dying if you're the Dream Team's fans as they break on in. For the Sonics, you just want to be able to engage in a pure fight with anybody who possibly comes to contest. One body inside of the admin office. Goddess just watching the stairs to possibly catch anybody coming back towards the site. But she'll lose a fight to Doodle. Now Diffuser going down with Neptunes. It's firmly inside. The C4 will miss. Another from Doodle. Thomas takes out Neptunes. Diffuser will be dropped. But it's Ghost perched outside to have to go and grab the kill on to Doodle and then grab the Diffuser as well. That'll leave Super down below to try and hunt the remaining members of Dream Team. There's three of them. There's 15 seconds left to go. Ghost just will look around the bomb site, heading over towards Connector. He doesn't have that Diffuser. None of them do, and they'll run out of time if they're not able to do much with it. Super gets cut down, and it's double for Drip. As it'll be another 4-2 scoreline, 492 Dream Team emerging from the first half. A different stat line, though. But this will give the 92 Dream Team six rounds on attack to be able to put away the Sonics and give themselves a position in Pro League. Now here's the big difference. 4-2 uh, scoreline coming out of the first half, but Dream Team starting on defense, which has been historically their very worst half by four far side by far so imagine now if you will the dream team we've been seeing every single attack going into an attacking half with a 4-2 advantage out of their defense half this seems like a sure thing for dream team it's not a certain it's not certain but it just seems that way based on our what we've been seeing today it's a very apt name for them as well because while the 92 dream team the actual team that won the gold medal uh -huh. were Obviously, no slouches on defense. They buried their opponents by just scoring way more than them, and it just goes to show you that sometimes a good uh, a good offense is a good offense as well. Yes, so, and that seems to be the mentality here for Dream Team so far. Yes, and there you go. Just to show you, it's been kills except for one previous round. It was that fifth round where time was what was what decided it, and that's the very first time that a round has been decided so far in this matchup that hasn't been based purely on kills. And we've seen some plants, but they haven't been the deciding factor as the retakes are very enthusiastic, no matter who is going for them. So, basement defense here to start things off from the Sonics. I really want to see what we're gonna uh, have on the side of Dream Team, because again. If, if Dream Team's attacks are going to be as spectacular as they have been in the last two maps, that, I mean, this might be just over. Just like that. Three rounds. That's all it's going to take. We'll find out. No Thermite is seriously going to hinder Dream Team on this site, especially. There is a Habana being brought. No Maverick is necessary on this map. They have got the Thatcher. Drip going to be going for that rotation. Or sorry. Flank hold and rotation hold. You can do a lot from that rappel. Uh, until just be probably sitting there for a pretty uh, pretty long period of time. Oh, maybe even rotating around in that general area. Hyena on the uh, Habana needs to have presence by the garage panel. He's on the other side of the map for some reason. Possibly doing drone work and then moving on over. Who knows? Maybe. Still have time. Clearly somebody has determined that all of admin is clear, as you've got Tomas in there now, and Rexon will join with no fear whatsoever. It's a different flank hold there for the Visa stairs. Usually you see it opened up right above the stairs. That time it was to the side. So, you know, a little bit different, but it's less consistent in your ability to actually hold the angle, as you don't have it head on, you have a sideways angle in instead. Here what sounds to be a shotgun inside a bathroom, but... Nope, there's nobody there from Doodles. Ghost is now down below, so they'll forever be in pursuit of the remaining members of Sonics who might be off-site. Nice seeing this 
resurgence of breaching charges here, especially with how much IQ has been played on these teams. Zofia's been running breaching charges in the past. We've seen it on a number of teams spread across all the regions. Thanks. And it just allows you to possibly use that buck or sledge roll differently. Yeah. Because you still can have some of that soft destruction, not always the same, but some of it available in other operators' hands. Now, mind you, Tomas is still going to be on that buck for most of this game, so you've got more than one way to possibly hamper your opponents. It's got to be that speed at which you're deploying the breaching charges is just, just so much more convenient. Uh, and all this vertical pressure that we're talking about through the breaching charges, the buck, a skeleton key, hasn't really amounted to very much, and that's, speaking of unfortunate, uh, it happens. Avian's gonna get the first kill onto Drip, but a quick refrag there by Thomas, so he's making up for his past mistakes. Rexon gets the flank of Neptunes. That's a really good pick there from Rexon. Playing an odd position at the top of Visa's stairs. His vertical pressure is continuing to mount, but there's so little time left. The attackers need to start pushing into the site. God is gonna get another long angle kill. She's very well known for that, taking out Hyena. And at the top of the spiral stairs is Super, trying his best to get a flank off, but he's gonna start moving back as he hears Rexon creeping up on him. Thomas is going to go for a drop, and he survives it. No one punishing him for that is going to be huge if there is actually any hope here for the attack, but so little time, there might not be. Goddess with some kills, and there's three for her in the round. A beautiful play on the time, and the Sonics going to clean things up there. Dream Team spending too much time upstairs, not enough time in the site. Habana alone pushing on yellow stairs to her doom, getting taken out by Goddess, then everybody else just get fed essentially into that meat grinder that is the Alda in the hands of the Maestro. Now, amazingly, the first two deaths to the Sonics ended up being both of their C4s, especially if you have the Mute running a C4 instead of that bulletproof camera, and then you also had the Valkyrie go down too. Now, because of this, there was no explosives. You didn't have to worry too much. If you wanted to go for a plant, you had to basically assume that one of the remaining members of the Sonics would put themselves in a place of danger. There wasn't a ton of plant denial really there for the Sonics in the same way that there could have been if there was a, a smoke on the board or if even there were extra C4s. All of it was gone, and still the Sonics played it in just a straight fight. Now, here's something that's pretty interesting. The Sonics are gonna whip out the Tellers and Archives bomb site. We haven't seen this in a long period of time. It's not a site that gets played by a lot of teams, and well, it can be a pretty tough nut to crack if you don't know exactly what the heck you're doing. It's also considered by some to just be a bad site outright, though. Um, especially without a Mira. Mira's very useful on this site. More so than I'd say the other two, or the other three, sorry. No, 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 it's gonna be a really interesting defense, that's for sure. It's not necessarily a bad decision here for the Sonics. I agree with you, if uh, Dream Team aren't prepared for it, it's seriously going to catch, catch them off guard. It's going to make this attack very difficult for them. And I think that's probably something that Sonics are counting on. That's what I was hoping for. Uh, I'm sure that Sonics are aware that 92 Dream Team have better attacks than they do defense, usually. Speaking of attacks, uh, this is a very quick one. They are just rushing right in, and there you go! Yardy, my boy, takes out Neptunes. He's in sight, he'll use all of his EMPs, and they have the bomb site to themselves. They can start to go for a plant whenever they want, and Hyena will do just that. Make no mistake about it. Thomas taken out by Avian, but Hyena is a second away from being able to get this diffuser off, and in 40 seconds, they will be quite successful. 92 Dream Team are just crushing the Sonics in this round. When I remember when I said maybe unprepared, well, not the case here. And Super's gonna go down a drip playing inside of Visa. It's just, it's just Goddess. Goddess has been having an amazing match, and she's gonna continue that with getting a kill there to stat pad a little bit. But it's not enough to come back from that kind of a disadvantage. I, yeah, okay, the site can work if it's your opponent is not prepared. But I mean, the Dream Team saw the site, and they're like, hey, we're just gonna walk in through main lobby. Now, the thing is that I was actually going to say before we got into the action, which happened very quickly, 39 seconds Diffuser was down for those counting at home. I was going to say, yeah, this is a, this site's a bit unorthodox, is the, is the word yeah. I would use to describe Good. it. It's, it's not very common, and it's not well-liked. Mm -hmm. And a lot of teams think it's just a plain bad site. Now, there's some time... Some disagree. Some disagree, absolutely. It, it has its detractors, mm -hmm. as much as it has its defenders. But... When you look at that, I was going to say, you know, the Sonics aren't bringing this out 
after just winning a round to try and close this gap, they're not bringing this out in the second round unless they feel pretty confident about what they're doing. And I think the general consensus among the Dream Team members were, hey, they're taking a long time to set up. Let's just rush right in. And it looked like they caught the Sonics with their pants down. That's really what it looked like. And they had the full control of the site within 20 seconds. And Hyena took about an extra 10 seconds to get there. Diffuser takes seven seconds. You know, there you go. You now have the site, you have the Diffuser down, and then there's there's no hope. Retaking that site is so difficult because it's on two separate stories, and a lot of times you end up basically pushing out the other defenders, putting them on a site where they have to retake through stairs, and it's exceedingly difficult. And now Sonics went for a very brave strategy, I would say, and it's it might come back to haunt them depending on what happens here because they were not ready for the speed that Dream Team brought to that attack. I mean, here's the thing, it's not just about the speed, it's about where they decided to attack as well, right? Because yeah, it was a rush in through the main lobby, but it was specifically the main lobby. Uh, the way that you usually hold tellers is vertical, right? Either from below or from above. In this case, you would play inside of admin office. Well, where can admin office not actually see inside of tellers? So how do you hold tellers? You put a mirror window on Visa stairs, but who's banned? Mira. So you can't really hold tellers from the main lobby push. And because there was nobody even sitting there to try and hold it, the initial entry from Drip, and it was, I mean, it was over. It's done. Round, round finish. C4 wasn't coming out vertically, so there was no denial. Was, whatever. It was, it was a quick round. Now, we'll be going to top floor defense here from Sonics. They certainly just gave away a round. It's possible that they're going to be able to lock this one out, though. Certainly, this is a much more reliable bomb site. Very aggressive uh, plays still from Dream Team. Quick control here in admin office and already opening up the Visa stairs. Say what you want about them on defense, but their attacks have been extremely precise and very fast. Offense, 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 as you were saying. Very, very fast. And they've been able to take so much map control very quickly. And I don't know if there's any hesitation on the part of Sonics to engage in straight up gunfights against the rest of the 92 Dream Team, or if they're just, they're accelerating because they know that maybe the Sonics are a little bit slower at their setups. Maybe they're a little bit more patient. Who who really knows? And it's something that we can pick the brains of whichever team ends up being victorious. Yep. There's still a lot of map left to play. There's still a favorable site rotation here as well for the Sonics that they could end up very easily closing this gap on. So we'll just wait and watch with bated breath, so to speak. And well, it's a slow round here. One minute, still all 10 alive. And Dream Team setting up on the site, and there you go. Doodle's gonna get the very first kill onto Super. It's a good pick there from uh, Attacker. It's IQ. He's looking for more, and just on Visa. I mean, slow going here from Dream Team, but they have the advantage. There's still plenty of plant denial here for the defense, but as I say that, a whole chunk of it goes away. Ghost hits the floor. It's really unfortunate what we're seeing right now from uh, Sonics. There is potential for a retake here, or a comeback, as it were. Avian in a good position, but he's not going to be able to deny the plant. And uh, there goes somebody who would, the last person who would. Got it. And on the flank, Neptunes is spotted. Avian unable to get anyone on connector window. Is this going to be a perfect round? Maybe not. As Jaeger gets one, looking for a second. And there's one possibly for the dock as well. Beautiful job there to Avian and Neptunes. They're trying to bring it back. It's a two versus three, but the plant's down. Thomas from top of yellow. And it's just Neptunes who will get a quite a lot of kills, but not enough to win it out. There you go. Dream team putting themselves on match point. Match point. And, well, series point, everything point. This is pro league point. Pro league point. This is relegation point right now for your 92 dream team. And... <sighs> Oh my. And we were talking about how, uh, okay, in map number two, when we thought maybe, okay, Dream Team's gonna get the 2-0, we were thinking, hell, that might be good, actually, in a way, for whoever loses, because then that team going in, up against Rise, less fatigue from the first map, or first match, rather. But here and now, we've gone every round, uh, except for, well, minus OT, I suppose, on the first two maps, uh, and... It's, it's looking like, well, actually, that's not true. Minus OT and minus one round. And it's looking like on this third map, we're going to be going pretty far, too, uh, no matter what the case. So whoever ends up going up against Rise, I mean, the longer this goes on, the worse it is for whoever loses and has to play Rise. That's the that's the main, like, storyline here. There's still potential to get into Pro League if you lose this match. It's just going to be much lower. This seemed almost inevitable. Mm. 
for Sonics that they would get to this position. Maybe. Let's, let's rewind to the previous season. Let's go back to season eight. An Elephant Gang looked indomitable. They were the Challenger League team. They were the Challenger League team. And a lot of people were saying, once again, a combination mostly of players who had been in Pro League. There was a, a running joke that was being you know, perpetuated by Super that the team was getting poached as a number of their players kept getting called up to Pro League. Yeah. They were the, you know, the breeding ground, so to speak, for, for Pro League replacements. And now, what ends up happening? Well, they end up falling quite short to EXG and then fail to make it into Pro League. And because of this, EXG gets the spot. They get in, and Elephant Gang, now under a new name, is in a very similar position. Now, the good news is that even if you lose this matchup, whether the Dream Team ends up falling short and the Sonics mount quite the comeback, or if the Sonics are done here at the end of this round, or the next round or the round after that, there's still one more match to play. You've still got Rise Nation on the docket. And I think it's kind of interesting because, yeah, on one hand, you have to run the gauntlet. The team that loses here is going to be pretty tired. Let's be completely honest. Yeah, and But they might also be warmed up. Maybe. And that's something to keep in mind as well. But it's also, it's not just like actual, literal, you know, exhaustion from playing. But on top of that, it's it's mental. You know, I, I, think, I believe it was Goddess who, who tweeted out, uh, yeah, today is for all the marbles, dot, 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 again. Well, a lot of these players have been here before multiple times. Whether it's going up or going down, it doesn't really matter. It, this, these All the Marbles matches are so high pressure. And Goddess was on a squad that managed to make it into Pro League, if you yep. recall. She defeated CLG, a team whose some of their players she would end up then being on a team with later on mm -hmm. when she came in under Reckless and then Beast Coast and eventually Cloud9. She is well aware of what it takes to be able to get past that hurdle and qualify on in. Now, unfortunately for Sonics at the moment, that hurdle happens to be four gentlemen who have never been in Pro League and one whose stint in Pro League was quite short. Yes. And they are all looking, or they're quite hungry, and obviously want to be able to take that spot away. And they're only a minute and 15 seconds away from doing that, Michael. Well, drip on top of yellow, looking to get some picks here. Surprised no one on the defense is contesting this, but that's probably thanks to Rexon on the buck, opening up a lot of angles from above. Mark's coming out from the drone work of the rest of his teammates, and that's going to give a lot of information for the buck for the soft destruction. As you come down to the last minute, all 10 alive, it will be an absolute slugfest, but it could be the last minute, not only of this round, but of this match. This is really going to determine who has the absolute best grasp on this site in particular. As there's still some work being done from above, opening up as many avenues as you can. Avian's going to lose quite a bit of HP to a breaching charge that will go off above him. And now he gets finished off by Drip, who has come alive. They called him Yardy for so long. And now it's on all on Drip. The new name, but still the same fragment potential. Doodle is there as well as Super will fall. And yet another goes down. You're batting for gold as best as you can. Neptunes will take one along with Goddess. Goddess will take some damage finished off, and it's all up to Neptunes in a 1v3 plant going down. He'll take one body out, but it's all up to Drip and Doodle, the two best players on this team so far. C4 gets tossed, but it will be too late. Doesn't collect one, but grab your kill, Neptunes. One of the hardest parts of the site is to being able to retake. You know you don't have very much. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time, four gentlemen and Thomas coming back to Pro League Change your Twitter bios. You done it, lads. You got the gold. The 92 Dream Team. They're your champions. Welcome to Pro League, boys. Oh, they are very happy. 90-10? Uh, I think was it? it was 60-40. 60-40. Yeah. Maybe he Who's, saw it at a different time. Who said 90-10? I don't know. Uh, what, what a performance this was. All of their fans, all of the detractors of this team, they come in once again. Yeah. They come in as the last place team into these playoffs, and they topple the two teams that most people assumed would be making it into the finals. The Sonics and Organized Chaos, and now the 92 Dream Team, are Pro League's newest team. So congratulations to 92 Dream Team. And while it's not all overs for Sonics, they still have a chance, but it'll be going up against Rise Nation. And we talked about this at the very beginning of the day. Rise Nation had an amazing second half of Pro League. Didn't actually end up mattering, but they did have, well, at least not for them, but they did have a good second half. So right now, Rise Nation are not looking like an easy to defeat team. This might be an insurmountable task here for Sonics as they are going to go up against Rise right after that very long match against 92 Dream Team. 
I would say if there's one of these two teams between 92 and Sonics that is going to fare better in a longer engagement, it would be Sonics. They have more experience in this setting. I think this was going to... It, it, of, of the two teams, it would favor them in this situation, but still, a, not a great result for Sonics or any, and any other fans. No, and I mean, you're talking about an exhausting matchup and a long matchup. Well, out of the out of you know the the 36 possible rounds that we could have played, not including overtime, we played 33 of those. Yeah. So there really wasn't much more we could have realistically played without going into the extra innings. Mm -hmm. These teams needed every single round almost to get to this point, and. I wonder how much of that consulate was just the spirit being broken of Sonics because they knew at that point that, hey, the 92 Dream Team is on attack. And the best part is, is that we get to ask them these questions. I really am eager to pick the brains of a team that has now just done the unthinkable to so many people, which is make it to Pro League. Yeah. And here's another tricky thing for Sonics, by the way, another hurdle that we don't often talk about. It's the fact that, uh, oh yeah, Rise has been watching. We just had three maps. Rise have been diligently watching all of those maps. And now that means that not only are you going to be exposed if you ever get to go to any of those maps, but that's another thing is it totally train wrecks your ban phase. Like, your ban phase going to your second match in relegations is so what do you even ban? Because it's, what you just played is completely exposed, way in the open. Uh, all of the strategies that you brought out in that match now are well known to your next opponent. So it's like... There's so many disadvantages right now for Sonics going up against Rise is ridiculous. But um, we should eventually have an interview where we could talk to uh, 92 Dream Team, figure out what's going through their heads. I mean, they've got to be so ec ecstatic of uh, uh, finally getting into Pro League. I wonder who, my big question is, who do you think is going to be the, the man to talk for the team? Because uh, it was Doodle on Friday. Okay. I think he's been doing most of their interviews, so I would imagine it's probably going to be him. We're just waiting on the interview call when it's ready. But I would imagine it's probably going to be him. Yeah. I guess. Apparently it's ready, so here we go. Mr. Doodle, congratulations. I, I want to know... Take us through that final round. Just take us through the final round. You swung it on attack. You take up those two rounds. You're on match point. Tell me, I want to know about your team comms. I want to know about your own personal feelings. Were you shaking? Walk us through it. We can't hear him. We can't hear him at all. That's great. Oh, I have my mic muted. My bad. But, uh... <laughs> some, some, sometimes, sometimes you forget the little details when moments like this happen. So feel free to start over. The last round, we weren't shaking at all. Uh, we were trying to keep a level head because on Clubhouse, you know, we choked the lead. So I'm just telling, reminding everybody we still have a game to win. You know, don't get too hype. It's match point. Everybody's excited, you know. But, you know, we're getting loud. We're getting hype. Every kill, we get louder and louder, you know. And then just at the end, it was all emotion at that point. We we're, were trying to cry, but we can't. But we're just happy to be in Pro League now. <laughs> Well, congratulations. This is a huge moment. Four of you have never been here before. Tomas was only here for a short period of time. I want to focus on him for a second. He came onto your roster. He didn't really have a wealth of experience in Pro League, but what did he add that helped you seem to elevate yourself out of the position that you were in for most of Challenger League? So uh, there's a big, I think there's a big skill gap in PL and CL teams just because of droning and how efficient you are with utility. And Thomas, we were, we were really lacking in that department before Thomas joined. And then Thomas, you know, he came out of the roster and he helped us with droning, using our utility, helping us in our 3v5s and 5v3s and stuff like that. So it's just overall the experience of being a pro player and being in the, the pro practice times and whatever pros do, you know, is what he helped us mainly with. And attitude, because Thomas is a, you know, he's a very smart player and he, he's very uh, loud, which kind of helps us. He, he's like our hype man. <laughs> Now, one thing that we took note of was how strong your team was on every single attacking round. Even when you were losing on attack, you were still coming very close, but you struggled on defense. Without giving too much away, what do you need to work on the most on your defenses, knowing that you're now going to be in a league with seven teams that are going to be much tougher opponents than you've been playing in Challenger League, and they're going to look to exploit that defense just as much as all of your opponents in Challenger League did? So uh, basically on defense, we all need to get better with using hollows. You know, we're ACOG warriors. That's why we that's why we shine bright on attack. But uh, a lot of the defense rounds that we were losing were we weren't adapting properly, which is sort of on the IGL. And we can just we just need to learn to adapt better and, you know, practice more setups with adaptations because 
you know, you scrim a team for so long and they all do one push and then Sonics come in and they do a master push, which we don't, we, we don't scrim against that often. So just, you know, scrim more and practice for other things necessarily, I guess. Perfect. Now I'm going to give you an opportunity to say thank you to all the people that you want to say thank you to, because obviously this is a big moment and talk to the fans, talk to your teammates, etc. You have the floor. I just want to say uh, shout out to Prophet. You know, he was the one who got me into Rainbow Six on PC. He was the one that gave me my first shot. And uh, thanks to all the fans today. Everything on Twitter today was amazing. You know, it really hyped us up for the match, getting all these congratulations from people we don't know. And we're well, not congratulations, but good looks, you know. And uh, we're just happy to be in Pro League now. Have you updated your Twitter bio yet? Uh, it's already updated. Updated the moment we won. Actually, I was mid round updating it. <laughs> No rest for the wicked, eh? Well, yeah. your, your team was your team rose to prominence in large part because of that matchup during the Invitational qualifiers, and we jokingly said that you were promoted to Doc, you were demoted to Cams, etc. Well, now all five of you have been promoted to Pro League, so congratulations, welcome. Hope to see more of you next season. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, Terry. You too. Thanks.